Uh, here, I'm adjusting my volume. People were telling me that everyone was too quiet yesterday, so now I've hopefully fixed it. Um, so, Discord yeah. Discord seems to be quiet always on stream. Yeah, you gotta like real, really mess with it, but uh, yeah. Also, I, it's, uh, <laughs> I've been making separate direct message like groups um, for every night that we do this, but the reason why is because I don't want to like clutter up the main chat in the Discord. Because I'll be, like, posting links and stuff, and I don't know, you know, so. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and get my my stuff set up. But, yeah, so I will be posting this on YouTube just to archive it in the future. So anyone watching in the future on YouTube, we have a few different boys here, and we're uh, going to do some, some character brainstorming. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. especially for... Uh random people's benefit you should definitely have the discord overlay up so uh, I like who's talking. yeah that is that is a good point i don't know actually if there's a easy way to do that like i don't know without you a game ask, open uh, tsm <laughs> yeah or i don't know the heart like, yeah, do you know how to do that uh no there's like a i think tsm said there was a a third-party plugin for oh. uh, for OBS or for Discord. Yeah, because like some games, you can do it with games easy, but I don't know if I don't have a game up. It'd probably yeah. be worth looking into either way, since we're not going to have a full cast of people with webcams on. Yeah. I, I believe you need to restart OBS when you download and install it, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about yeah. it for now, then. Um, Yeah, so here, that's another thing. This is not really, this is tangential, but like... Uh, like, I don't know, like, so I'm gonna, I plan on using my webcam, and like, Tartarus, nor you normally use your webcam, but I'm not gonna require you to for, for the D&D &D game if you don't want to. <laughs> um, I'll, just get a, I'll get a green screen morph suit. <laughs> there it's, there we go. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, yeah, I might be the only one with the webcam unless Tartarus does it, at which point we'll have to figure out a way to do that like on discord uh, or zoom yeah. I don't the rest know. of us could be in the same voice call on discord but not have our cams on so it just be yeah that's true blank oh. spots and then you put images over the blank spots for those of us without cams Rhett posted the discord overlay thing okay yeah in in my chat also um when you mentioned the green screen morph suit i thought of something terrifying putting just like green circles over your eyes <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah, just, like eyelids it's awful oh, oh yeah. so good actually That's... somebody i watch that plays hearthstone they have a green screen behind them but their eye color is green enough that mm. they're, sometimes they're hollow eyed oh wow yeah so uh, good disturbing uh i'm gonna try to set it up i, I gotta work on the overlay my wonder overlay if i'd game... have that problem too my, my overlay game is not strong right now but uh <laughs> But here, I, I have it so that the... Big black borders around everything. Yeah, actually, no, this is not correct either, because it doesn't need to be... Alright, let's have it like this. Um, for I get to be lazy characters. today, because Perplex did 90% of my background work for me. Yeah, are you actually... No. Uh, spoilers, we'll talk about your character in a bit, but are you actually planning on doing the, the whole sibling thing? Yeah. Why not? Oh, let's go. That'll be weird, but it'll good be way. good to have characters in in at least partial groups. Like, yeah. Of course, we'll all have known each other presumably for a couple of years or longer, but still, it's good to have different characters with extra connections. Are you yeah. are you like brothers, brother, sister, sisters? It kind of breaks. Brothers, probably. I I played okay. a, I played a female character one. Well, actually, it was like two to twenty couple games ago yeah hmm. for, yeah so um trust me you do not want poetry hitting on you i didn't hit on i didn't hit i don't think i had anyone okay. hit on anna i don't think see that's what i'm saying if like you were if there was like step siblings i'm sure stud would get you stuck in a dryer at some <laughs> <No>. point <laughs> i don't think there a was a dryer dude i don't think there was anyone that hit on on your characters in that campaign <laughs> no nah, not really there's a lot less of that yeah um we went through too much cringing the first game <laughs> yeah that's true um so uh yeah it kind of does it doesn't work super well in this overlay but i'm just gonna leave it it's good enough um so yeah so sam uh what is your experience with uh with D D? like what is your knowledge level uh i've played it for like 17 years oh okay so, so you played yeah. a good bit actually 
Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, what edition did you start with? Uh, I started with three point five. Okay. I uh, did like five, and I did like Pathfinder, and I also like run like Call of Cthulhu, and I start. I want to try running Delta Green because it seems like a lot of fun. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. So that's yeah. you. You have a lot more experience than I do. Then, because uh, I yeah, we I've only been, we've been playing since 2017 with our main group. So, God, it's been that long. Yeah. So it has been like I don't know four years now, but that's not that much. Um, yeah. And so I've only ever played I and run 5e. Um, the good system. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's it's more like for me when. Uh, you know, since it's what I've learned, and then, um, and then since most of the games I run fit decently well with it, I don't really have any desire to learn anything else. <laughs> um, if there, if I want to play something that's like a like a sci-fi game, obviously I would use a different system. But as far as like fantasy, our you know tabletop RPG games go, I'm like it works. I'm, it's simple and fairly easy to homebrew stuff for it. If I do want to add other weird things. So I'm like, yeah, I, I find it's like really easy to like improv stuff in D and D too, right? Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. fantasy setting and everything, right? <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So then, okay. So that's good then. So then I probably don't even need to really go into too much of the like actual stats stuff. I mean, uh, we'll talk in a bit about how we're gonna do stats because I, I know you asked about that, but uh, <laughs> I think first we're gonna. I think first we should just talk about your idea for your character, which. Yeah, so, which I, I did see what you said. So my understanding is basically that it's like it's a a spoiled fisherman. Yeah, I can I can give the, yeah. the little pitch right here, right? Yeah. So yeah. okay, uh, right now the character that I'm brainstorming his name is Lars Ringstadt. He's a seafood salesman. Uh, he was initially a seafood like a, sorry a fisherman. But he didn't really like getting his hands dirty, so he managed to like weasel his way into a sales position. Um, he got his job from nepotism. Uh, he has a successful father, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's his sort of employment position, and that's probably the reason why he'd be on the boat. I don't know, surveying fish or something. I don't know, whatever <laughs> seafood salesman does. Um, and uh, about him personally, he's uh, quite the slacker. So he's he's more likely to try to, you know cheat his way out of things even if it's like a trivial thing that you would normally like not think about like trying to put off so there's gonna be that kind of angle and uh yeah he's uh like, like he's the kind of person who would like like during their like watch he'd probably fall asleep anyways um yeah, that kind of thing um and yeah he's got long unkempt hair and he just wants to go home like he's he's not used to yeah. like, if i'm assuming this is going to be some kind of uh like a, a shipwreck scenario most likely and yeah, he probably just wants to go and sleep in his bed, and he's, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of his his shtick right now. Yeah, yeah. So the the idea with the campaign is it you guys might you you probably won't be shipwrecked right away at least like you'll probably have the ship, um, and this is something that I kind of alluded to, but more of like in my other games, um, so like yeah, you and Tartarus haven't played in my world before, but like basically. Uh, there's basically some magical force that prevents travel across the ocean between essentially like the western continents and the eastern continents um and so the idea is that you guys are going to be not so much shipwrecked so much as stranded in like a the other half of the world um, okay. but the same logic applies that your character like that could like that'll and the first couple sessions are basically going to be playing through how you get to that situation you know and it'll um have some some kind of crazy stuff that happens as a result but after that um you know maybe that'll affect how your character uh how they feel about that <laughs> um but uh that, that could definitely work like uh that's the whole I the whole idea of the campaign is that your characters are either well you know it'll maybe your plan your the plans will change but the idea is the group is either trying to find their way back home or maybe even grander than that find a way to like make travel possible long term between the two homes or you know old home and a new home you know um definitely be a money-making opportunity yeah so so and that's something that i all kinds of fish 
Yeah. So that's something that I think it'll it'll depend on what happens in the game. I don't I'm not going to tell you guys what your plans should be, so, right? Uh, it's like you guys could try to go you guys could just decide that you want to conquer this whole new continent or set of continents, right? Like like that's to, that's totally feasible. It could be like you guys become religious missionaries. It could be that <laughs> And obviously I imagine it's going to be all of our characters going completely different ways and trying to yeah. cooperate. Yeah, that, that, that's what'll make it interesting. Like your character, their 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 whole deal might be at first just to want to. Get it sounds home. like yeah, like Sam's character is basically the scummy, rich <laughs> kid that goes on to the ship for like a month to get some clout and get married afterwards or something. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, oh yeah. yeah, I raided and we did all this and that and the other thing and. Yes, yeah, so maybe, I, maybe his father's <laughs> friends with the captain of the ship or something. That's what I was actually gonna say, by the way. So I, uh, again, and feel free to shoot this down if if it doesn't go with what you had in mind, Sam. But like, so like this ship is kind of like a like a raiding ship. They're not like hardcore raiders that are gonna like sacrifice everyone that they meet to the gods. But they're basically just they're basically just opportunistic kind of like mercenaries slash pirates that basically. Um, just go out every once in a while, raid a village, take all the rich stuff, come back, and then party it up in the city that the group is leaving from uh, okay. at the start okay. of the campaign. So it could totally be that like your 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 character's father is friends with the captain, um, and basically your character is probably not really the type who would be uh, fit for the raiding life, right? From what it sounds yeah. like. yeah. Like, but, like oh yeah sorry what it, what i would say my character from this like from this thing that you described to me it, it could be either he's on the ship to like because he wants to go party okay as you said that you know ends in parties or whatever and like at the city or something yeah um or he got on the ship through uh like just sheer personal negligence um that's that's another possibility mm. to getting on the wrong ship i don't know how possible that would be <laughs> it's like <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah. well, probably, like, I don't know, the, the ships are, it, it's like a big long boat, so it's probably not going to be that easy to hide unless he was like a stowaway. <laughs> okay. Um, although I, in, a, in a supply <laughs> barrel. <laughs> I, I do like the image of that, but I th it would probably work better with the, like, with um, it being willing. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say, yeah. like, probably your character doesn't really get what they're signing up for, especially because, like, I imagine that their character basically is probably like, you know, this is a good opportunity to just become more popular and gain fame. And uh, he's probably well, my heard... my friends are raiders. I need to go raid <laughs> Well, he's probably also, like, heard that the raids are normally not too dangerous or harsh. And so he's like, oh, I'm just going to hop on for a raid. And, like, that could Try totally... To be the backseat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, basically... Um, yeah, so we'll say... Uh, let me write this down in my notes. So father is friend old friends like maybe your your character's father was like a part of the raiding crew with the raiding captain like you know decades ago and then settled down became a fisherman a successful one at that and now we've reached your uh your character um, i think this adds up yeah yeah so like father's uh is an old friend of oh god i can't remember the name i give the captains einar einar i believe so father's an old friend of einar the captain um yeah um i'll let you decide if they were like actually raided together back in the day or if they're just friends otherwise but uh um yeah we'll see maybe they did yeah, yeah. But I like the idea that that played them into them getting their position on the on the boat. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe your character's dad like even like pressured them. Like, come on, you got to do it, son. Yeah, like, and maybe I don't even know how much he pressured. You know, like maybe I said I expressed some degree of interest in it, and then you know maybe he pushed her harder than I would have. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, literally, like woke up on the boat, not even knowing he was getting mm. sent there that day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and i'll i'll leave it up to you what um sounds better to you but i'll say that they're basically on the boat as either you know or, or they're on the boat for either or for the purpose of uh for the purpose of either like getting some 
I don't know, some glory, some glory. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah, getting some glory or uh, clout, um, or maybe it's a boot camp situation from the father. <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe they're getting they're there because they want to get some glory, and they don't think, uh, you know, um, they don't think it'll be that bad or that hard. Or maybe they're there because. Uh, maybe they're there because, um, yeah, I'm just gonna write this. Maybe they are there because their dad pressured them to be there. Yeah, there could have been some some degree of pressure. Yeah, some some societal pressure maybe too. Maybe maybe people at work think I'm like soft or something, and that like irks me or something. And uh, yeah, you know, I need to prove that I'm I'm not. He, and in, in the in the most uh, nonchalant manner possible, of course. But yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah, maybe societal pressure. I'll write that down. Um. Yeah. So so you can think on that, but like any of those could be realistic reasons why. And so like uh, like I said, this this raiding crew is not necessarily like they're not like religious fanatics like some of the raiders in my world are. Um, some of the raiders from areas nearby um, are a bit more like fanatical where they're just going and burn down a whole like town just because they want to. But pretty much with this raiding crew, they're mainly just like we're gonna go in and steal all their the valuables from their mayor or whoever. <laughs> And then and then get out. So, um, so yeah. Um, okay, yeah. That and that would like uh, probably work pretty well. I don't know. Is there like just, and, just a quick? Oh yeah, sorry. Question, if you don't mind, uh, how does this fit in with the other players at the moment? Because I don't really know too much about what other people are doing. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I'm flexible. So yeah, yeah. So okay, so uh, so. Perplex or Troy, his character is uh, is let's see, yeah. So we've we've I've only I've talked to Troy a bit and I've talked to Tartarus a bit. So we have a couple ideas, and then I, I know a little bit about what the others want to play. But um, uh, so Troy's character is basically my world's equivalent, or this part of my world's equivalent of like a like a half giant kind of deal. Um, he's actually doing a reskinned like Goliath, but basically I don't have Goliath in my world, so I was like, you can be this other giant toy race that has uh, you can just reskin it. Um, but uh, and his character basically was kind of like taken onto the crew because he was like a, an orphan and stuff, and he's like the the cook as well as like a a budding fighter for the the raiding crew. Um, and I think he is, uh, I don't actually even remember what, uh, class he was doing. Uh, uh, fighter oh, into yeah. Cavalier fighter. Yeah, Cavalier, that's right. So he's going to do Cavalier. Um, yeah, and so his character is just kind of like, um, like here because he doesn't really have a home anywhere else. And, uh, this was better than wandering around like he was before. Um... Tartarus's character, from what I gather, and we're probably going to talk about it a little more later, is uh, essentially was a a feral child uh, that was then adopted by orcs and raised in the wilderness. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, the, the I, proper... I, can't, I cannot speak. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, you can't. You and... can. You can speak Orcish. You just can't speak. Uh... I think that's what we were leading towards, right? Or like, you can't I don't speak. Know, man, fuck, <laughs> fuck it. Give me no language, dude. <laughs> well... How is we this can... gonna work? We. I do. I'm on the boat because I smelled some food. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, let's let's <laughs> eat this shit. Well, so okay, then... so like, I don't know. They, the orcs of my world, like they're they're not like I don't really like the stereotype of them being like super dumb savages. Mm. So like the mm. the orcs are like they have their own rich cultures and stuff. They just are pretty. They live harsh lives out in the wilderness, but they they would definitely. It's like it's not like they would just not teach you any. I'm, I'm human though do they like humans maybe they're just like yo look at this little monkey dude 
<laughs> keep him as a pet. They, like, you're, you're probably illiterate, but you probably can speak. Yeah, right. like I would say, like you probably uh, would at least speak like Orcish, a basic basic Orcish, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Five year old <laughs> level. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it would fit if yeah. you were a feral child and you didn't start yeah. learning language till like, you're like six or seven. Yeah. That would really fuck There's your one, development. So yeah, that's fine. I okay, I accept this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. But you, you, yeah, you speak like a yeah fifth grade level Orcish. <laughs> Um, so even if we do meet anyone that can translate me, it's still going to be fricked. Yeah, I, I think I will, just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to have another orc in the crew who can at least, I, like, translate for you. I do like <laughs> that the, the bitch is like, okay, you're a bunch of northern raiders. Being like a northern raider human is the, the normal, and everybody's just all effed up already. Yeah, well, hey, I mean, I'm human. He is human. <laughs> He have is... giants and humans that aren't really northern proper and don't even yeah. speak the language. <laughs> well, I mean, they, it sounds like Sam's character is the proper is northerner from there, so. is basically the worst Viking possible. <laughs> yeah, um, at least starting out. Hold on, I'm gonna put my overlay up for a second. I was gonna look at something. I don't want it to show up. Uh, I don't even remember what I was gonna pull up though. I was gonna pull up something for my notes, but um, but yeah. Class wise, we have a cavalier fighter. I'm probably going to be a druid. Oh, there we go. Tartarus yeah, is looking at barbarian stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt, uh, Matt so, was going cleric. Yeah, I think he was going to be either cleric or paladin because he is obsessed with paladins. In, in our last, hey man, he's got a type. Yeah, in our last, that, that doesn't throw with that. Yeah, in our last uh, two games, though, he's played three separate paladins. <laughs> he's played more paladins than we've had campaigns um but yeah hey don't pressure him you want ryan back no I'd, I'd much rather have the paladins honestly but um yeah so uh ultra so, edgy rogue had its moments yeah but i don't really you know so i i don't really i don't necessarily um care too much about like you guys having balance as far as like magic users and not like it could be all magic users for all i care i don't i don't really have any rules when it comes to that um but it's, so far it seemed pretty it is it actually just turned out pretty balanced we have uh yeah like barbarian fighter yeah. but then we have a, a possibly a druid and possibly a cleric so and well uh, yeah honestly the only reason i went with druid is that i haven't played one long term yeah yeah ever really and that's how my rolled and order stats pointed me so yeah oh yeah well well yeah we'll talk about yeah, i could have been a druid or cleric but i don't want to be a second cleric yeah just like i'm fine with people being the same class but i personally try and avoid it a little bit so that we do a little bit different stuff yeah um so sam uh you said you're gonna you're thinking about a rogue then yeah okay. yeah because that's the most weaselly class i'm gonna weasel my way out of things okay so, yeah yeah yeah, that sounds good. Um, and if you decide on like a like so as far as like backgrounds go, if you decide on something for like a mechanics reason, we could easily work it into your story. Like I don't know, if you're if you wanted your character to be like a petty criminal, maybe they just got into mugging people for a while just for fun. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I'd probably be more into like the petty crime on like like the maybe like legal front. I don't know. Oh. Like I, I think he I think he's like very boring. Uh, yeah, because he's, Shit. Not, he's, he's a hedge fund manager. Yeah, I was, yeah. like I was gonna say, he, he took he <laughs> took a small loan of a million dollars from his dad, then and now he's like a loan shark. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that, and like I don't know, so maybe like not Charlotte. paying taxes. <laughs> no, yeah, stuff stuff like that, like that. Um, that could totally work. So yeah, uh, I was raiding to avoid the tax collectors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, any sort of but yeah, if you think of like a way that any of those backgrounds would fit well, um, you know, um. But yeah, so I guess, uh, but it sounds like you you have a good idea for for your guy, and and like with this campaign in particular, since the uh, the whole setup is that your characters are probably not going to be coming back here for a long time. Um, you know, eventually the campaign might have you guys returning here, and from there continuing back in your homeland. But um, this is more just to get an idea of where they come from and how that's going to affect you know, whatever happens to them as they are stranded on a new continent. Um, so a lot of the stuff is going to kind of, is to be determined, you know, it's like, you guys don't really have to have a 
super elaborate backstory. Um, so as far as uh, as stats go, uh, Sam, since you were wondering about that, I decided to do something a little strange for for this one. Uh, for this campaign, where so normally I just like basically let people choose between rolling or point by, um, but uh, what I decided to do for this one is that I want you to roll your stats like with forty six drop one, except then uh, assume that they would be in order. And that's option one. Option two would just be to do point by. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and I only I did the I just I was just gonna do point by, but I was like, you know what? If people want to roll, and then have it in order, maybe it'll like reveal something about their character, or maybe it won't work at all for your idea, and you just point by. <laughs> yeah, we could do we could roll it all out, and then fall back on point by. It yeah. doesn't really make sense. That's basically I what I was. Yep. Yeah, since you already have a character idea, that would. I... That's basically... I had the advantage of not knowing what class I would be, so I just did that. Yeah, but I was like, you know, since I let him roll his and just take him in order, I was like, I'll let other people roll and see if it's good, but I'll be, I'm not going to lock you into that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, well, I think it's a good compromise because rolling can have the problem of like being p being too swingy for people. Like somebody rolling three 18s can just be sickening for some other people Yeah. to, to see, but so... if it's in order... Those high rolls can be in pointless places. Sometimes. So here, uh, you know, I'll put this in our group chat that we're in right now. Uh, here's the link to the Roll20 game, which um, for now we'll be using to set things up. And uh, if you want to um, to just like roll all the stuff in order in the, the chat there, then we can just look at it. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. And let me make it so that... Who knows? Maybe he'll get maximum dexterity. Nice. Good start. Um, I guess that's... Was what it starts at strength, though? Oh, wow, that is good. Yeah, so that would strength, be your strength. Con. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So then... And then Muscle drop. rogue, dude. So it'd be drop a grappling mass. So that'd be a 16, which is, like, yeah. That's All right. pretty mad. Okay, let's see. What about... Uh... Oh no! <laughs> but then the decks would be eleven. Mm. All right, eleven if a human oh. plus <laughs> oh sixteen God. con though. Holy dude! <laughs> what? what? Dude. <laughs> sixteen uh, intelligence. That's real good for a rogue. This is freaking me out. I don't know. I've, I've never rolled you know, this well before. Given his conceit, him not being great at like rogue combat but good at other things kind of makes sense it could yeah oh there's a so not very wise but that's okay like it's it's still an 11 that's not terrible and then uh 13 charisma in charisma i don't know so it's like obviously the the point my would let you maybe spec more into like decks if so... that's what you're planning but at the same time that's 16 strength 16 con 16 intelligence yeah, and if it's you go kinda... like variant human, you can get a couple <laughs> back into decks anyway. It's yeah, it's kind of, it's up to you. That's if, true. It's up I to you. If, back uh, into decks. Yeah, now that we have that in here, it's like you could think about this for a while, and then you don't have to make a decision. Yeah, this is right bizarre. Now. Like maybe I was like an athlete or something. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Uh, or maybe just, just a, all the fish a work. Drop out in the chad. All the fishing yeah. work. You were like uh, hauling up nets of fish like with one hand. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Um... But maybe I'm really strong, but I don't like exerting my muscles. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. Uh, he he just worked out to get the look, but doesn't really care about <laughs> using the muscle. Yeah, here one second. I actually I ordered some food and it got here. I'm gonna be right back, and then uh, yeah, one minute. I have to process these rolls. I'm trying to think. Like I think he rolled pretty well above average. Yeah, it's def I, I would say definitely above average. Because I, I'm trying to remember what the average... Or what, like... Point by, it's a little weird since it costs more to go high in anything. Yeah. And then there's standard array, which I think is just... It's fine if you don't want to do any work <sighs> thinking, but... 
Okay. I think it's actually pretty bad for total. Do I, do I launch the game here in this oh. website? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, did okay, you, you want to... Here. You want we'll, to roll and see? Uh, we'll do your... I think we'll... I oh mean, if you're ready God, to... I see a name. If you're ready to start yours, Tarchus, we could do that... Uh, Oh, I think I'll turn my, my webcam off while I eat. What's this <laughs> pinwheel on his thing mean? Uh, I think it's just loading him in, like, I don't know. For me. Yeah. Okay. Strange. I'm, I'm turning my camera off just while I eat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I don't know. So, so Sam, other than that, like, uh, obviously, if you have more questions, like, we talk about more stuff. But, like, that's I think that's pretty much all that we really I really wanted to bang out right now. Um, just making sure that you, like, other than that, it'll be... Uh, I don't know, I guess just the normal standard process for choosing skills and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. So, um, yeah, Tartarus, uh, well, we'll talk with Tartarus more about, like, how combat and stuff actually works. But um, but for you, since you've played a lot, like, the, the only optional rule that I can think of that, I, that we do use is we use flanking rules, except instead of being advantage, it's a plus two. Um, okay. Yeah. So basically, because I, I like the idea of having a slightly more tactical game where flanking is taken into consideration, but advantage is like a real big. It's a big swing, you know. Yeah. And then you so, get obliterated when there's a bunch of things with pack tactics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so instead, I basically decided like let's just do a, like a, like plus two, basically the equivalent, the opposite of half cover. Um, you know, half cover gives you plus two to your AC. This is like you're being flanked, so you have it's too easier to hit you. So, um, that's I think that's like really the only kind of big change to rules that I have. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so I, I guess I don't know. That's that's probably good for now for, for your character stuff, Sam. and and uh, if you got something to do, then feel free to head out. But otherwise, you're, you're welcome to hang out while we talk with the other boys as well. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll hang out for a little bit, but I'll probably drop off in a... Yeah, I know you, you probably have, like, like, work and stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, all that all that fun stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... So, um... Hmm. Tartarus, did you want... The... Well, Let's see his rolls. Yeah, Tartarus, did you want to do your stuff now, or did you want to wait a few more minutes and have me uh, finish Kragox's stuff? You're going to finish Kragox first. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. well, I, I don't think it'll take that long, Kragox, because it sounds like you also have an idea. <laughs> um, Kragox, did you just snicker at that? No. <laughs> we'll let him finish. I'm a mature adult here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, and I'm, I'm, I'll put these on different documents eventually. Um, so... So I mean I guess I'll, we'll have to work it back into Perplex's uh, backstory, but it, it'll it it kind of works. It's not really much different. Um, yeah, like I was, if I remember right, like his character, you know, big giant boy, human mm -hmm. community, shunned, yada yada. Mm -hmm. Joined up with the raiding crew because he wanted to feel like he belonged somewhere. Yeah. Kind of thing. Or prove himself or whatever. It was basically more like he, like, literally saw this raiding crew in action and was like, hey, I don't have anything to do. Take me on your ship. <laughs> um, which is ridic I ridiculous, but... If our characters are siblings, I imagine I would just go with, uh, well, I guess I gotta stick with my stupid sibling. Yeah. Sort of thing where... My character probably doesn't care one way or another about being on a Viking raiding ship, but that's where their sibling wanted to go. So, mm -hmm. and so you were thinking about doing like a, a star druid or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was circle so they of stars or have, something like, like that. I don't remember. It would have basically uh, knowledge of the stars and navigation a little bit to justify them being allowed on. Yeah, I, I would say like. Maybe they were maybe like as a I don't know just at, like as a, as a kid where like maybe they were fascinated with stars, and yeah. then and then as they well once they joined this crew it became useful so they got even better at it. Can um, you can you tell I come up with the race and class and then the backstory? <laughs> not There's nothing wrong with that. Um, 
Um, okay. I also tend to do more fleshing out of the character when I'm playing them rather than yeah. trying to write it up beforehand. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. We're also in a situation where we're leaving any <laughs> like anything and anyone that we would know on the other side of the world, so yeah. it's going to be more about character interactions than anything. Mm -hmm. um, Yo, what's this strange sheet that this boy's looking at? <laughs> what? Who, are you talking about me? Yeah, it's like, what's this the skin to this? It's like oh. a customized barbarian sheet or something. He's like, oh, I don't know. I just I just searched D and D character sheet and then barbarian <laughs> and this one came up. Yeah, well, oh, I think yeah, it's just a, like, a, like a it's a custom uh, sheet to yeah. We'll cater we'll um, to a barbarian better. We'll work oh, on. Okay. Um, I see Waffle suggesting stuff, but we'll 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 do your stuff in roll twenty just to have it there, and then you could transfer it to something else after if you want. Okay, where do I where do I uh, is there oh, a sheet I, in roll twenty? I have to, yeah, I have to make it so that you can. Are you in the game? At least, uh, yeah, I am in the game. Yes. Yeah, with your your real name. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fine. Um, yeah, I guess it's, if you care about that sort of thing, it definitely could, be good. To you can change that. the display name on the on roll twenty, but um, anyway, so so now you have access at the at the top uh, top. Middle third tab over I'm journal. I was looking very confused that totally not Europe. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking confused because the game is saying that your entire map is 160 feet <laughs> yeah. in length. It is, yeah. Because that, that no. tools for like for combat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it uh, doesn't. Okay. I haven't changed the measurements. I mean, I can I can change the scale. You can just abstract uh, it and be like a foot is a yeah. mile or something. Well, I could even yeah. just do. Hold on, hold on. Let me do. Uh, okay. How so, many miles is this roughly? Let's say, look, look at it now. Now do it. Oh no, it's meters, not miles. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, now it's just, Shit. That's a bit under a kilometer. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, no, hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. You'll not get the better it's of me. It's kind of like that one. It's kind of like that one D and D book where the map scaling is to oh, yeah. mile, <laughs> and it's a like a tiny little city or something. Yeah. But supposedly it's like 500 miles long. Yeah. Now look at it. Now you can't laugh. I don't actually know Very if that's okay. technically right. I think it's actually slightly <laughs> small uh, still. The, the, yeah, the it's that's quite small stuff. still. Yeah, yeah, hold on. It would be like, yeah. um, it would be like, how many? So it would be like. I should know. We spent so much time early on trying to walk around that map. And then we just started teleporting. All right, what about now? Yeah, I don't remember how wide this continent is, but that's it's pretty easy. That's probably pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the Aldish Isles yeah. or Alderlin itself was around 400 miles across. So that, that looks good. Um, yeah. anyways, so, so. You, you gave me permission, but my view has not changed. I have not noticed any... So you have to... Uh, at the top, there's tabs. If you go to the second one, you should have a character you yeah. can click on. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're uh, uh, but yeah, well, so here, let me... Here's what we're gonna do. We should, um... <laughs> let's, uh... So, Craig Alex, I don't know. Was there anything what? else that you wanted to talk about? Or should I help this boy get his stuff going? I think I'm good for now, other than nitty details. Okay, yeah, yeah, we can... Like, like, as far as background, I'll probably end up using just, like, Sailor or something. Yeah. Um, what's up? To get uh, the right proficiencies. Kingly Boo, welcome to the stream. Let me, here, Tartress, I'm going to pull up your stream and then restream your stream so that I can see what you're seeing. Wow, content thief. Yeah. All right. Um, here, uh, <laughs> hold on. First, go to uh character sheet not the attributes and abilities thing yeah that page scares me a lot mm -hmm. yeah. then then give me a moment as i get your stream up to steal your content who's clicking my shit oh i'd click your stuff if i could um Hold on. Oh god, I'm getting so flooded. Uh, hold on. I told okay, you you're gonna okay, have okay. him use the character mancer, right? Yeah, that's gonna be the plan. Uh, oh well, I already clicked manual, so <laughs> we should we can get you back. You can into activate it. it from the menus. It's yeah, fine okay. Still, you, you see where that core is lit up red, and then yeah, the gears, the gear menu you're just on. Oh, actually, I don't know what your stream delay is, so I have no idea. Hold on, okay, yeah, yeah. there we go. Gear, I see gear. Yeah, character sheet, then next to core, oh, bio, and spell. Why did, is oh, it? Okay, that gear. Okay, I see. It doesn't, what? Hold on. Yeah, I'm working with like a five second delay. Then at, when you scroll down, there's a couple like symbols with an, 
hammers and anvils, you want to go to yes. the launch level oh. character master. Okay. I don't know. It won't let me capture your stream. In like... the future, if you use this, you'll want to use the level plus character master because level one will like yeah wipe your character and redo it whereas the level <laughs> plus will add one. Yeah. Okay. Character. All right. Here. Like, All right. Uh, I don't know if I actually wait. Let me see if I click on your character and open it. Can I just see what oh, you're doing? Oh, I can! Also, Let's go. Okay, this will be better. This is much easier. I don't know how much uh, Tartarus will care about extra options. I assume this... Th did you put uh, content sharing on this game? Oh, God. Uh... I, I mean, it, say, I'm gonna, gonna want content sharing, so I'm I to, will like, put it on, but it shouldn't matter for now. It would just level one, right? Because uh, like, besides yeah. background, other than but... like weird backgrounds. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll okay. look at that separately. But yeah, no, I'll I'll turn that on, Krayox. Um, so I think I can just I I don't think I need to restream your stuff. I can just look at it, um, from here. So let me get it set up on my stream properly, so it's a little oh, easier. God, it... Yeah, it's it's just the standard rules. Uh, yeah, that's okay. For now, that'll be fine. Um, so, so let us uh let us <clears throat> look at your stuff. Yes. Um. Okay. So if you click next, let me see if it works. It should move it to the next page for me too. Or class. Uh oh. What was this? Oh, I think Sam left. Uh, oh, he said yeah, that. he hopped off. Okay. Uh, if you just hit next at the like bottom right of this yep. window. Wait. I'm in class now. Oh, okay. It doesn't change for me, too. Oh, shit. That's oh, I was in race right now. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's okay. That's where you're supposed to be. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, I assume he'll want to be a variant human since. Yeah, well, so. Customize more stuff. So, uh, so, you know how we talked about how like your six basic stats are like the... Uh, Strength, Dex, Con, all that stuff at the top, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so again, basically he's showing the, him plus one on everything because he's normal human. That's <laughs> yeah. The thing. Uh, the normal idea is that uh, maybe I will need to stream it because it actually doesn't really want to. I get bored. There we go. Now yeah, I don't think it shows. I don't think it shows you yeah. his changes. Okay. There. Making. Yeah. Now it's now it's showing up. Drag. Which don't exist, sadly. Um, no. a I'm a boring baby. man. No, uh, I just have a vision. The only awkward thing is, <laughs> since you have none of the content sharing on, if he does go variant human, you're just gonna have him ha have to have him That's look okay. up all of the feats. That's okay. And yeah. Type it in manually later. So, um, so yeah, so Tartarus. Before we get too far into this, there is basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way that you normally determine your stats is um, is by uh, the way I normally do it really is with point by and basically you just like allocate a set amount of points into certain mm -hmm. things. However, I have been giving people the option to first roll for stats and take those stats numbers in order. And if it works out for what you wanted, or you can, it inspires you for something new, then you can take those stats. Otherwise, mm -hmm. just revert to point by as a backup. Okay. So yeah. the way that you normally roll stats is that you roll four d six, and then mm -hmm. you drop the lowest. Oh no. So if you just literally type slash roll, space, and then four d six. There you go. And do it five more times. Can I? Oh, I can. Yeah. So there's two, three, yeah. four, there's five, also six. One more? There's also one more. There's also a mm -hmm. little, little dice symbol top left where you can do, like, custom dice stuff as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so this is actually, this is kind of interesting. Uh, this is, like... That's actually very good for a barbarian. Yeah, so this is, uh, so, so basically this would be, again, in order... Strength, mm -hmm. Dex, Con, Int, Wisdom, what? Charisma. <laughs> I fucking have twenty intelligence. It, so, well, no, so you drop the lowest. So it's sixteen. Sixteen, which is still insanely exactly. smart if you were to do this. Yeah. So it might not fit with your idea, but well, um, the thing is, he he can be smart, but not not proficient in any education <laughs> stuff. So he's basically naturally very intelligent, just doesn't know yeah. anything about anything. It's true. It could work, but like. 
if you took this, your your starting stats before we mess with your modifiers you get from being human. Um, yeah. Your stats would basically be 16 in strength, which is really good starting out. Um, yeah. A 12 in dex, which is already, like, that's, like, slightly better than average. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Um, 16 constitution. Again, very good. That's pretty much where you'd expect to start with a barbarian is, like, 16 strength. Yeah, 16 like, this is, like, under. ideal basic barbarian other than the the weirdly low dex and weirdly high int yeah well i don't know even <laughs> yeah. for i mean even if you're using point by dex is normally not gonna be too high because yeah unless you really want to if dump you're using point by the, the the most extreme you can do is you could do like 15 15 15 8 8 8 <laughs> yeah <laughs> but so like um so yeah so then you're you're as far as physical characteristics because you know like basically the kind of the biggest split in the characteristic or the ability scores is like the first three are physical ability. Um, the last three are your mental stuff. Um, yeah. the, the only thing that would make your a barbarian a little weird is that they would actually be much smarter than the average barbarian uh, normally is going to be when players make mm -hmm. them. So you'd have 16 intelligence. You'd have 10 wisdom, which is literally just like um, completely average, right? And then 13 charisma, which is above average a little bit. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you if that sounds like too ridiculous for you, if you don't like the idea of having all that intelligence, it's obviously mechanically it is literally only good, but it's uh, it's up to you whether or not you you want them to actually be that smart. Um, like Crayon yeah. is saying, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be like very literate. They could just be very mm. good at like tactics, for instance. You know. Okay, and if if I want, like I can just use these numbers but if i want to just drop one like if i just want to drop int i could do that mm. or do you want to, if i do use these numbers i should just keep them mm. it's one of those uh weird things where it's like i don't <laughs> i don't think there's any reason it's, to... it, you would never allow somebody to raise it off of this situation but yeah willfully lowering it is like a well if you wanted they're, to they're like just making themselves strictly worse for the character <laughs> yeah like so I, yeah. I don't think there's really uh if you wanted to just drop it um like drop a score to a lower number honestly that yeah. would um you know just I... <laughs> you know like drop my into five or something <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to drop it probably lower than eight because yeah. you're getting to the oh. you're getting into the realm where you have the intelligence of a literal animal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like uh... I mean, <laughs> less so. Like I, like I was there, a feral child. If you get to like four and five, there are legitimately regular animals that might be smarter <laughs> than your character. They're... Yeah, okay, like um... what? What will that like? Will that cause any issues? Well, so imagine that a wizard casts a spell on you that has an intelligence saving throw. A like uh, an eagle might be more likely to save it than your character would be, uh, <laughs> right? Like, um, intelligence saves are not too uh, too common, but like, and uh, you know, it, at that point, a five is kind of stretching the bounds of realism it, in the other way. <laughs> yeah, a five would be your character is probably has an actual physical imp like physically mental impediment, like, <laughs> oh, God. like eight. Eight is just your on the low end of average yeah or 12 I, you're yeah. on the high end of average you I go would... down to five or four it's like you're actually like you had blunt force trauma as a baby or something <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh but <laughs> uh yeah so <laughs> um yeah I, I would say if you're gonna drop it like yeah like eight would be eight or nine it, to recontextualize it with strength like let, let's say you're rocking a character who has five strength they would have difficulty moving their own body weight probably let alone carry anything yeah and so think about the equivalent of that mentally is like yeah yeah so you know like they don't they don't uh they don't move and breathe at the same time yeah yeah so like um yeah i i don't know um i would say like if you want to take those roles um it is fun to take like a role you... thing and roll with it you know you could All leave right. it and just avoid, like, intelligence-based skill proficiencies, which is another layer of customization. Like, your character is naturally good, but they're not educated in anything to do with brainy boy stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, if you want to take this and drop your intelligence down to a number of your choice, I will, I will allow it. Especially since it's your first time playing, I, you know. 
It would be kind of funny, though, for the Barbarian to, like, hit the books for six months and suddenly be the most erudite <laughs> member of the crew. No, it's so good. Um... <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? I okay. I'll drop it. I'm gonna drop it to ten. I'm gonna be average. Okay. Is yeah. That, that cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fine. Um, I can't wait for, I can't wait for that one really important in kinda... save. So <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> you're like, oh darn, Did, shoulda. The, I think Perplex said yesterday that if Stud ever does an int save, then you're fucked. Because <laughs> one of them, one well, of them like fake, kills you right DC. away. So, um, so now yeah, it's, it's because they're so rare and they're, they tend to be really yes. bad. Yeah. It's like, if you're in a situation where I'm casting one, that's, that's, uh, you're probably up against a wizard and a decently high level wizard is going to ruin your day. But, um, yeah. So, uh, so as far as, um, so, so the thing with humans, uh, is, mm -hmm. um, there are like basically two normal options that I use like humans. Um, the default option with humans is. Is that if you're a human character, you just add one to all of your abilities. Um, okay. So that 16 for strength would become a 17, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's a one across the board, which is really strong. Um, the other option is to get... Oh, God, what is it, Krayox? It's two in a single yeah, you, stat? You pick, you pick two to put one oh, plus yeah. into... And you also get a feat, which is a special customization thing to do to your character. Yeah, and so that is which the... Yeah. Feats either are kind of weak and give you an extra plus one in an ability based on what the feat is, or they do something crazy. So yeah, mm -hmm. like, if you just go to, like, Google and type a uh, list of 5e feats... If he goes to D&D &D Beyond, D &D Beyond, I think he'll have access to look at all of the feats. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if just, you can see that stuff, I would try to create a character. Oh, I have to sign in. Yeah, so but yeah, if you just like find a list of like fifth edition feats, there's plenty of lists that you can find that will basically just show you kind of all the the basic idea. Yeah, they, they vary quite widely. Like they can be to the point where it's like, hey, take this feat, and suddenly you're proficient with cooking tools, and when you cook a meal, you could like make people heal more. Yeah, like so that. like, so if you do um. Prerequisite or, hey, like human or, or maybe, another one will you know. let you take a little bit of magic. Have one feat. Uh, that okay. You know what it is because that's the only human specific one. So oh, so if you did, yeah. you did, okay. it's exclusive. And... Yeah, just I would say just reset. Like just don't use any filters and um, okay. yeah. So so basically, uh, like if you just start looking through though, like let's say like you get I, the actor one is a good example. Like there at the top where mm. it's like you get plus one to one of your stats. So you get a, yeah. a slight bonus, but then you get like you become skilled at mimicry. Obviously, that's not mm -hmm. going to really work for your character, but that's Alert's just an idea. Pretty good. Yeah, but that's it's kind of redundant for barbarians. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the idea of uh, of like the, the feats are normally going to be around that level of uh, a decent buff to something specific. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, so the idea is like for you being a human, you can either get one plus one across the board to all six of your abilities. Or, mm -hmm. or you could do one of these feats and plus one to two of the abilities. And, yeah. and then obviously some, some of these of the, have racial restrictions and other yeah. restrictions. And obviously some of the feats have plus one as well. So you could still get plus one to another one from this, you know. So it's, it's kind of, you know, lots of options. Um... But yeah, so yeah, and you can open them. Yeah, by if you hit, on them. Yeah, if you hit the plus, then it'll like show you more info about what mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. So ah, it's telling him he needs the handbook. Um, can we? Yeah. Too bad we couldn't Bullshit. summon Jack to add him to the sharing. Most of these, if you just look up on Google, you can find. Yeah. So if there's one that like sounds good, like feel free to just look it up and be like, "Oh, this sounds good." Like you know, based on your image of what your character is good at. Yeah, Honestly, I'm, we're we're spoiled with Jack's content. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, um, honestly, what I would say is, if there's orcish specific ones that you really want, I would allow you to have them since you were raised by orcs. Depending, maybe depending, but you know, I would tentatively, uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any orcish ones that rely heavily on like crazy physical attributes. Like it'd be yeah. one thing if it was like a dragonborn feat where you have <laughs> yeah. to, like scaly skin to be <laughs> or like breathing fire <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um... yeah. The orcish ones are stuff like I get angry so I run at my opponents mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I hit hard. <laughs> well, yeah, like um. Again, if you don't really care to get a feat, um, you could also just literally just get the plus one across the board, too. So it's, yeah. it's totally uh, up to you. I'm liking the charger. Mm. Okay, so the, yeah. Oh, yeah, you run at... Actually, I'll look that up. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the dash action, by the way. So I, we haven't talked about how combat works in depth because I want to do basically like a practice combat with you at some point. Okay. Um, and that'll be an easier way to kind of show it. Um, but uh, the very basics of combat is that on your turn, you get movement and an action. That's the mm -hmm. very basics. There is more than that, but essentially uh, you, oh. you get your movement and you get an action. With your action, you can do any number of things, such as attack or use a magic item. Or cast a spell um and the idea with uh with uh dashing is that you get to move like again so in other words you get double your movement for the turn of course oh, okay. if if you dash that means you normally wouldn't be able to attack right mm -hmm. but it seems like that feat basically kind of says if you dash you can still attack like i actually haven't looked at it what, is, what does it say specifically oh that's the is. first part in chat and copy paste so okay. yeah you basically give up your action which means you can't do a normal attack but if you run at somebody you can then choose to either attack them or shove them really far away oh and you get yeah, a maybe. big bonus to to hit them or no you get a big bonus to the attacks damage okay mm -hmm. so that that could be if you're into that it sounds like it would fit with your character if you just want them to be a barbarian that charges in you know yeah, yeah. It, I'm looking at that one or Crusher. Okay. Charger. We'll see, Crusher? Charger is going to be fine early on. Crusher would be better long term. Okay. If you, Crusher is good for let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if you want to use a bludgeoning weapon, is mm -hmm. the the thing for that. So yeah, it would so basically a, like it depends a if uh, or a club or something. Mm -hmm, yeah, if you were using like a uh, or like a war hammer or something. Long term, yeah. if you were using like a great axe, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't have an, it wouldn't. Yeah, help. once per turn okay. when you hit a creature with an attack that uses bludgeoning damage, you can move it five feet to an unoccupied space. So you basically hit somebody with melee attack so hard that you can push them away. And mm -hmm. when you hit them with a critical hit, which is like you roll an, a twenty, yeah, on your to hit roll, like, yeah, you so roll a natural you twenty. Roll, you always roll a d twenty plus your modifiers to try and hit somebody when you attack them. If you roll a 20, that's a crit, and basically it means that everyone else that attacks that creature after you hit them with a critical attack will have advantage. Mm -hmm. So you, like, stun mm -hmm. the person a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday we didn't really talk about criticals, but the idea, as you might imagine, is that if you roll a natural 20 on the 20 side die, then you get rewarded. And if you uh, roll a 1, then you are punished. <laughs> yeah, for some stuff. For attacks, yeah. I think it I think it's mm. just attacks are actually the only thing that punishes a one um, explicitly. Yeah. Well, and you uh, death you saving. Critical throws. fail skill checks. Yeah. And you um, can't critical exceed them either. Sentinel, I see you're looking at that one is also like honestly it annoys me so much because it's so good for the players. Sentinel, <laughs> Sentinel's like top five best feats. Yeah. So that okay. one basically, and that is also really good if your character's all up in their business because basically it means that like so you know so again normally with the action economy. Normally, creatures have, uh, again, in general, like, their movement and their attack. However, if you're in, like, melee combat with a, another creature, you're locked in combat, right? And one of them tries to just run away. Um, mm -hmm. if, if that's all they're doing, then they, uh, the creature that they were fighting can get, like, a free attack at them, basically. Mm -hmm. Even when it's not their turn, a reaction attack, where they basically, you know try to slash out as the other person turns to run. Um, however, that can be counteracted. If you're the one running away, you can use your action to disengage, which would normally prevent that, basically. 
basically okay. that person is using their one action to just carefully back off and then they can use their movement to run what mm -hmm. sentinel does or one of the things it does is that if someone does that and they try to run away even if they are cautious in how they run away you still can like basically slash or whack at them to try and stop them in their tracks Mm -hmm. so it's it's really good when you're fighting some enemies and maybe the enemies are going to retreat you don't want them to retreat you can basically be like nah you bastard and then just hit them anyways yeah it's... and if you do hit them with that with, with a reaction attack they can't move afterwards yeah for that turn. so so mm -hmm. not only do they fail to avoid getting hit by you when they run away they can't run away mm -hmm. and you can also attack an enemy as a reaction when one of your allies gets attacked that's standing next to you mm-hmm yeah. Which is going to also be good because I think, yes, yeah, so there's going to be at least one other person up in like melee. So yeah, so yeah, so those are um, that you know, those are some ones that would all yeah, those would all like work pretty well for you. Um, yeah, and you can always like wait to decide if there's something about your character you want to add, like if you want them to be a cook or something like that. Yeah. Although we have a cook, so. Yeah, if, if you want, like, what we can do is we can just continue with the rest of your character creation and then come back to yeah. add this bonus later. Okay, yeah, so, I'll think about it for a bit. Mm -hmm, yeah, since we, yeah. since you're going with these stats, it's not, lots of times you might, like, switch around your order of stats based on what you do, but since we already have your order of stats, it's not a big deal, so. Yeah, I think okay. he also gets, yeah. like, proficiency in a skill as variant human. Um, it, it might be. I don't know. We uh, it, it'll it'll yeah. show up once he clicks like variant human off the options. Yeah, is actually does okay. that show up as an option under race like human? No. Okay. It scroll down. Um, oh, oh, is it? Down. Oh no, it's not there. Oh, it says standard or custom. Yeah. No, it's not on that screen. It's lower down. You have to oh. be in the human, and then it's a sub. -menu. Yeah, he's looking yeah. at it. He's look. It's just it's not there. Yeah. Huh. Okay, um, so it's gone. You can do custom though. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Right now, you can just uh, so as far as language, um, See, that would be orc? the the orc. Yeah, I'll I'll look up what mm -hmm. variant actually yep. gives. Um, and then I would say for sub race, just put custom for now, and we'll uh, we'll worry about it later. All right. Um, alignment we'll also worry about later. <laughs> All right, variant human, plus two ability score. Or plus one ability score and two traits. Mm -hmm. You can't stack them both on one. That's yeah. one thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get proficiency in one skill of your choice, and you get a feat of your choice. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as that other stuff there, Tartarus, don't worry about any of that. The, the speed is okay. 30. You just put 30 in the speed box. Um, All right. And then we'll come back to the proficiencies. All right. Um, and then you can hit next. The rest of the stuff we'll worry about later, yeah. Okay, Barbarian, I know that one. There we go. Mm-hmm. So that one is good. Basically, um, you're, you're, there's a lot of stuff there that you don't really need to worry about too much. But on the right, you see how it has, like, hit points, and it says hit dice? Yep. So the idea is that every level, when you level up, you, uh, the under hit points at higher levels, basically... You either roll a 12-sided die uh, and then add that to your health, plus your constitution mm -hmm. modifier, um, or you just take the average of a d12, which is 7, or t round, okay. round it up, too. So it's kind of in your favor to just take the average. But it's uh, basically, at every level, you'll gain that much more HP, right? And like the 12-sided die is the largest of the classes. Um, mm -hmm. No other class has 12-sided. Some have 10 and then a lot have eight and stuff, but um, yeah, basically, being a barbarian, you're gonna get a lot of uh, health. Okay. So, um, so now we can start going through like, the armor proficiencies and weapon proficiencies. You all just you just get that, and it adds it'll add it to your character. Same with the saving throws, right? Being a barbarian, mm -hmm. you have uh, you have a you're proficient in strength saving throws and con saving throws. Um, and, uh, yeah, so now we can just kind of go through one thing at a time. So with the skill proficiencies, um, it will basically just come down to, like, you have some options that it'll give you, and you just decide which skills do you think your character would be good at. Okay. 
Let me see. There you go. I think I was looking at perception and survival on that sheet that you sent me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so if you just go to the uh, the drop down yeah. menus there, yeah, you'll see what options you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could do perception and survival. Um, and then, yeah. So then that's what you start out with. You also start out with your rage. And, and mm -hmm. once we like do a practice combat, you'll see how that works a little better. But uh, at some point, you can like take some time to read through that. Essentially, you have a, a certain number of rages where you can eventually... Uh, what Basically, you go into a rage, you take less damage, and you deal more damage. You know, pretty mm -hmm. simple. Um, so that's one of your features that you get. Um, yeah, I see... Oh, God, I see that. You uh, see that list of stuff. I don't know how you got... I don't know how you got <laughs> it either, dude. I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what you did. Fit. I don't know what you did. Don't don't worry about it. It should be fine. But um, he got to the advertising section. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't don't worry about oh, that. Oh, right I now. bet I bet it told him it's like something was from the player handbook. Oh yeah. Uh, it so it took him to the store page inside that window. No, don't worry about it. it we'll, it'll go away on the next page, I think. So if you just uh, right, okay. if if you just look on the left side of this page for now. Yeah. Um. So after rage, I think it's unarmored defense, right? Yep. And basically, the unarmored defense is just saying that. Even without armor on, your character is fairly uh, hardy. Mm -hmm. So, depending on yeah. his background, you might have to go back and change some of his proficiencies. Um, yeah, that's fine. We'll get to that. So, um, yeah. So basically, your your character is uh, uh, pretty hardy even without any armor on. Okay. Um, if you hit next, then it'll probably fix that. Weird yeah, window. no more ads. Yeah. Really, it's just that you smell so bad, nobody wants to <laughs> So, ability score method, just put custom, because we rolled them, um, you know. All right. And, and um, put the scores in there? Yep. So, it was, uh, yeah, dropping the lowest one for each. So, 16 strength, and uh, 12 dex, etc. Yeah. Constitution was 16. Mm-hmm. Um, interval is 16. Oh, wait, no. I did 10 int. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to take the 10 int. And then 13 charisma. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um, And then... Uh, then you just hit next for that. That one's easy. So... Uh, Background, it probably only has like one option because I, I as accolade, yeah, yeah. So, we're gonna have to look or, at this just yeah. off uh, on another website. So, if you just outlander yeah. is what it, I would assume, it's if you custom too, yeah. So, we're just gonna have to add, yeah. a, add it manually, basically. Okay. So, as far as uh, I would just go to a different tab and just type like 5e um backgrounds <laughs> and uh, and we could just look through there. There are a few that I would that will probably work uh okay. like like outlander would be probably a good one yeah raised by raised by like tribal tribal orcs basically or it there could be go. you know there's other ones Fuck that could yeah. work like athlete maybe i don't know uh you know uh there, there's uh there's a lot but um it, it kind of depends on how much of your character's like life up to now is based around them being raised by orcs or if they've been doing something for a while after mm -hmm. yeah like if they if like if they're like 25 and they spent like 23 years with the orcs and then got on the ship a couple years ago they're probably gonna have a background based off of being like tribal <laughs> mm -hmm. or whatever level so, of society the orcs have so yeah if you uh if you type uh, if, yeah uh, yeah unfortunately We'll see if we can Good find goal. a way to add it so that you get the shared resources. I could. It's kind of it's kind of scuffed, but what I could do is I could screen share go. my myself looking at stuff. <laughs> it's probably fine. Um, okay. well, I'm in the background outlander. Yep. You don't need to worry about like the the yeah. origin stuff. We, That's we just... might have to okay. proofread stuff to make sure it's not real scuffed. A lot of sites will yeah, change some... stuff in broken yeah. ways to avoid copyright. Yeah, you don't need to worry uh... about the personality traits and stuff uh okay. is there anything else on the page or, or is it just that let's see yeah what's at the top uh, yeah what's at the top because usually it gives you a couple like proficiencies and stuff athletics survival oh, yeah. okay okay that's the same yeah so basically your character would get athletics or survival they would get oh or okay 
Yeah, they would also get proficiency with one type of musical instrument. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Yeah, you can decide what that is. Uh, sure. And a language of your choice. And since we okay. said your character is not <laughs> the best with language, we could mm -hmm. uh, we could, it could be something exotic, like if you met and bonded with somebody out in the woods. Yeah. yeah. Like or maybe uh, Selvin, which is basically like what dryads and stuff speak. Yeah, that could be interesting. Like, if you wanted to... I don't know. Maybe you said that, like, before you were adopted by the orcs, some random, like, you know, spirit of the forest was watching over you. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. Um, Spirits got tired of your shit and dropped you with the orcs. <laughs> no, but if you if you don't if, if you don't like that, we can just add something. Uh, we can just find a replacement, basically. So Always go with... Abyssal and never explain why. <laughs> so yeah, so why do you speak the why do you speak the demonic languages? I don't know. Under uh, proficiencies, <laughs> if you go to skill, type skill, okay. and then it should let you uh, add okay. athletics. So, yeah. If I already have survival, yeah, it won't oh, let him have survival it. again because he already already has it. So, so what you can, can yeah, what you can do is you can go at the top, go back to the the class tab, and we can just replace your survival from there with something else so then yeah so then one are, of the are other these ones. not are these the same proficiencies it, each it's a limited its, own list. it's a limited number based on the, your class you only have certain options yeah. for now. okay so i okay but i get three i would get two from here and then one from the other page no you'll get two from the other your background yeah it's just so that, i get four it's in just total? that you it's just that mm -hmm. survival Okay. It picks survival here, and survival's from the background, so it blocked off. Ba survival. Yeah, basically from the background, so, it's mm -hmm. a, it's set which ones you get. These ones are oh, chosen. Avoid, so, yeah, avoid. Uh, what is it? Avoid picking athletics and survival on your class page. Basically, yeah, sure. Get just... perception and intimidation. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you got kid intimidate. Good. You have plus your charisma, which <laughs> governs that. Yeah. So you so are then, and then background. Add another game. one, mm -hmm. and then skill. And survival, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then oh, a you man. can do another one for the music, uh, the instruments for well. for the custom background feature. He should put wander, and I'll just t copy the text for him. Yeah. Uh, so for Yo? no, that would be like a other or tool. Uh, do they have tool? I don't even. They don't even have no. That. No, just the do tech. a. <laughs> sure, do tech. <laughs> yeah, that uh, works. No. Okay. No. It, oh no. Okay. Yeah. Just do. Uh. Just do other then. Oh no! It isn't tech. There's a pan flute here. Oh. Oh yeah. There is uh, some instruments. Okay. There's a few. There's lutes, lyres, pan flutes. I think there's like the there's horn. A horn. Yeah. Drum. Bucket. Drum. Drum. There okay. we go. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm a you, drummer boy. You guys, a drummer. Nice. <laughs> All right, so then, uh, yeah, if you just want to uh, uh, mm -hmm. copy that, that last paragraph that Craig Ox put in the chat. Had you responded to uh, Soy Boy, by the way? Uh, yes. Matt, uh, Matt, we'll do yours a another time. I don't, I'm only doing a couple at a time. We'll do yours and Drake's another day. Yeah, you'll just want to call that in the little box above it, Wander. That's just what the feature's yeah. called, yes. and it'll give it give it a name for the little drop box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, that is just like an additional little feature you get from uh, from being this. And so, like your your the excellent memory for maps and geography, it kind of it okay. can make sense that your characters like they're not good with language and they can't read the maps, but like. If they see something, it makes sense that they might. Their brain has gotten good at recognizing other patterns, you know. Yeah. Um, Find food and fresh water. Yeah, yeah like you, you know, memorizing features of an area is a very mm -hmm. good survival skill. So they've, uh, their brain is able to pick up very well and stuff like that. So guess it's a good thing my boy is a map maker. <laughs> yeah. So there is <laughs> um, there is stuff for personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws. You don't really need to worry about that stuff. It's basically to give you kind of some more direction as far as like role playing mm -hmm. um, it can be fun if you want to do it yeah i end up usually ignoring about half of them <laughs> yeah some of them are fun to play into like the flaws especially like 
it's a good way of like making yourself play your character suboptimally sometimes. Like if your character <laughs> is a good guy, but he just really can't help but steal from people. Yeah, mm -hmm. like so if you want to kind of look at some and choose some, or even randomly do some, but uh, if you don't want to, you don't. You don't have to. Um, okay. And and you can do that like later on your own time, just looking through. Um, so that's yeah. all for for that. Like, one of the flaws for Outlander is violence is my answer to almost any challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you go to the next page to equipment, normally this is not too hard to figure out. So uh, I would do class equipment. It will be better mm -hmm. for you. Um, so basically then you get to choose between a martial weapon, basically like a true like good weapon, and uh, obviously, eventually, you're gonna pick up new weapons. You're gonna buy new weapons. You're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, commission he'll, uh, weapons, whatever. But this is your starting one. He'll have to add the equipment from his background manually. Oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Mm. So like, um, the way that uh, weapons work, not all weapons do like the same amount of damage, right? Um, so like, hmm, hmm, let me try. So, yeah, it's not too many things, though, so it's, it'll be easy. Yeah, so the basic idea with weapons, though, that we've talked about is, like, again, weapon attack rolls, you do a 20-sided die for, and everyone uses a 20-sided die to make any attack roll, mm -hmm. then with just their bonuses and whatever involved. Um, however, the, however, then there's a damage roll that is secondary. If you hit, how much damage do you do? And normally for mm -hmm. that you use one of the smaller dice, either a d4, a d6, a d8, a d10, or maybe a d12. And um, and it's basically to represent like how heavy the weapon hits. Um, so like a, a great axe rolls a d12. A dagger is a d4. Mm -hmm. Of course, they uh, they also have like other benefits, right? Like a, a, a dagger can be held in one hand and you could hold a shield or another. Security. Yeah, so you could hold something else in the other hand. Whereas a great axe, you have to have both hands to swing with it. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for right now, it like it doesn't necessarily matter too much. It's kind of like more like what do you want? What do you imagine them using? Okay. Yeah. And in general terms, is it like a blunt weapon, you think? Or like a some type of sword that slashes or an axe, you know? Oh, I'm a blunt boy. Okay. So you want a great club, yep. <laughs> which is if you want the biggest weapon, a great club is the big, big old boy blunt weapon. There's um great. yeah either that or like um hmm. If you I've, want to be able to switch uh, between one handed and two handed, there is a warhammer. Yeah, warhammer would be based on whether you're using one hand or two. Yeah, but so uh, it, I I don't see a great club in the list, so yeah. then I picked warhammer. Yeah, I don't think great club is one you can start with. Right, there's just normal clubs to start. Oh, it's in. Oh, it's in the uh, hand oh, axe or any. Oh, it's weapon, a simple yeah. weapon. So, so oh, okay. Yeah. So you could actually have is, a great is it a club. I actually am not entirely. I don't remember. Um, I'm gonna open my handbook. Yeah, up. but yeah, so totally you legally procured yeah. handbook. So you could have the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if your character, if you want to have like a war hammer that is uh, more of an elegant weapon, but then also have the great club that you just bring out to bash things. Mm. <laughs> uh yeah um yeah a great club is only a d8 unfortunately but it's okay. two-handed so as far as the big weapons it's a great axe a, is a war pick a blunt weapon uh it's i think it's, it's, it's piercing, piercing damage weapon. but it's uh, piercing. Okay. but like it's special most of that the, like, the types of damage is mostly a thing yeah i guess i guess strictly speaking a great axe is the only d12 yeah, Big it weapon. is. Mm -hmm. A great sword does two d sixes, so it's got. It's like a it's higher more... average, or it's like more consistent. But... but yeah, like you can take a great club instead if you want. Yeah, I would take mm -hmm. a war. Honestly, a a war hammer is probably the best middle ground. Yeah, All right. Since yeah. it can do a d ten two handed. So yeah. Wait, so do I uh... want to choose both? Do I want to choose both boxes? I mean, so you could have like, uh, well, you definitely want uh, like. There's no reason not to. But what you okay. could do is for the the second one, the, the kind of other option they have is that you could have two hand axes. And the benefit of those is that they can be thrown, so you'd have some or any amount of range. Mm -hmm. If you want just a tiny bit of utility that you can always use, you could do something like a sling even if that's an option. Um, which will just, it like, is, just like yeah. rocks for a little yep. bit of damage. So it's like, yeah, there, there's, you know, basically the, the second option, if you wanted to double down with another big boy weapon, 
the club could work or if you want to have some range yeah it's mm-hmm. it's up to you i like the hand axes it sounds like a good good idea yeah you get yourself some i don't range. know dude have you ever seen those people at the ranges throwing them and have them bounce back in their <laughs> face <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh yeah the, if you just hit the um, next from that okay. we can add the other stuff later um I, you don't have I feel any... like i'm not going to know any spells yeah you don't have any spells um yeah no barbarian ever gains access to mm-hmm. to well not no barbarian <laughs> not but no, but in general yeah. yeah so the uh feats again might become relevant if we once you decide whether you want to do like standard human or variant human yeah mm-hmm. you get the feats um but other than that that is basically it so if you go to yo there's like bio, which if you want to type your backstory up there, you can. You don't have to. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can always hot edit it later. Yeah, and then yeah, there's all the the name, age, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, you can edit that later. Um, yeah, age is technically important for very <laughs> few reasons, but it is technically. <laughs> yeah, there are some spells that could age you up in an instant. And... <laughs> um, but yeah, if uh, if you um. Like, for whatever you have there, um, if you just go to next, it should be, like, a review of everything. It is. And then if it looks good, um, then just apply changes, and it should... Uh, I'm yeah. being built before mm-hmm. my very eyes. Mm-hmm. You'll have to go through a mock yeah. combat with this boy, since I think he's the yeah. only one that has done D&D combat we, before. Yeah, we will... We will do that. I don't know. I mean, we could do it right now, or... Like, you if know. you want... Like, that would probably be fine if he wants to stick around for a while. Yeah, do you do you, uh, want to do a mock combat? All right. All right, let's do it. So, uh, let me grab a, a token. Hold on, I'm going to close... Why thing. do we have a javelin? Uh, do you have a javelin, or do you just have proficiency in javelins? Uh, it says... Item? No, I think I have a javelin. It's oh, you under must have, the, uh, that yeah. must have been selected when, on one of your weapon slots. Uh, no, I have a know. hand axe and warhammer, which is what I chose. But you also have a javelin. Well, I actually have no idea why you... Yeah, it's... Oh, I think what it is, if I remember right, one of the selections is actually like two javelins and a something else. Or it's oh, like, yeah. Oh, I think what the first section was was two javelins and a martial weapon. Yeah, I think, I think you might you might get oh, the javelin gear. I think those are just bonuses. Okay. I think mm. I think that's still as intended. Yeah, I think so okay. too. So um, here let me put my my webcam back on. By the way, javelins um, are cool. I think they can. If I remember right, they can be used kind of like a, a crappy spear. Yeah, right. if you need them that way. Um, and they can be thrown, obviously. So, all right. So here's a uh, here's what we'll do. Let's get a uh, a new map going here. Combat. Uh, let's call it arena. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're entering the arena. Hold on. Let me. Uh, my stream. Not my stream, but my my laptop died. I suppose you'll also have to link his uh, sheet to a placeholder token. Yeah. So we'll we'll do that. Um, let's just grab a. Uh, I don't want to. It might show my stuff. Hold on. Let me let me just grab a token for you, bud. Barbarian. Let's just look up Barbarian. But yeah, doing combat uh, stuff, Tartarus will involve oftentimes when you're attacking something, just clicking on one of those attacks and spell casting things in the center of your character sheet. Mm-hmm. Oh, does he? You did it already add his? Uh, because it's for one handed and two handed. Let's see. Let's have it be. Hold on. Yeah, did it already? Actually, yeah, Craigox, since you have his stream up still, it added his attacks correctly? Yeah, everything looks okay. good. He's got, the two, okay. like I said, one-handed Warhammer, two-handed Warhammer. He's yeah. got his hand axe to attack with. He's got javelins. Okay, Rage yeah. is a thing. Oh, so yeah, that's the other uh, thing. Yeah. Barbarians can get angry and do more damage and take less damage. Yeah, so let's have it be... Why, you have a little rage button? Okay, let's say that, uh, do you see this orc boy? Um, it kind of looked like a frog, but sure. Yeah, you can zoom in at the top <laughs> to know, see it better. Right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So, Much better now. Uh, here, you're, you're this orc boy, even though you're not actually an orc. You know, he's got a war hammer, so that's you for now. Okay. And you're going to fight a, uh, just a random dude, sure. Oh, God, his, that's all fucked up. No, hold on. 
you're gonna remember you're gonna have to tie him to his sheet probably and then yeah take it off and put it back on again i uh, know i'll get it i'll get it oh why are they all stretched in weird ways <laughs> they're not it's that... long boys uh you know that's fine you're fighting this elf dude or whatever he is yeah, fuck elves. So, it gets real curses when you mix these kind of tokens <laughs> with the round tokens. It just looks <laughs> my boys weird. hate elves. <laughs> honestly, they probably do, I honestly. actually hate elves because yeah. both the orcs and the elves of his setting are basically like wilderness kind of people. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... Uh, well, just the elves you run into, not all of them. So, here's... Is this a the... farmer elf? <laughs> yeah, he's got a, like, a he sickle. sickle. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, basically, if you... Uh, so, if you click on your character so that they're selected, you should actually see, like, your like a health bar over him, right? Uh, yeah, I do, yes. And uh, so, if you... Uh, you have to be on, like, the select tool at the top left, like, yeah. the, the clicker. The, the arrow oh. icon. At the I top. see. Yes. But, uh, I'm just oh, gonna... many circles showed up. Okay. Uh, Who the frick is this dude? Yeah, yeah, the center one is tied to your HP you're, bar. You're just going to fight you this You can also guy. display stuff like temporary hit points and armor on there. Yeah, But so, so like it, right now it's showing your HP, which is 15, which is real nice for a first level character. Because you have good con in your barbarian. Oh, God. <laughs> I see what you've done there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the idea is um, if you have I your like character... I like that it tries to show something, it just goes <laughs> to a line. So if you have your character selected... Um, yeah. In the, the middle top-ish area, there is the initiative thing. And your initiative is just one right now. The reason, uh, Basically, you have a plus one to your initiative, and that's just because it's based off of your dexterity. Yeah. So your dex bonus is plus one, yeah. so you right have Right above plus your one. HP amount. So yeah. if you, when you have your character selected, click on the text that says initiative itself, the text itself. And... Okay. Your first roll was a was a a two, which I two. which becomes a three, because yeah. <laughs> oh because of the plus one. Yeah. I see. Yeah. You have to but, be clicked on your character because that ties the initiative roll to your character. To your token on the uh, map. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the idea is uh, so now if I um, move you over there, which is why it then... shows your little little token boy next to the Tartarus character. There. So then I will roll, and I'm gonna make sure I'm rolling open so you can see hmm. how it's working. Uh... So then if I roll for this boy, there we go. He rolled a, he rolled well. Uh, so if you want to, by the way, if you want to, um, Tartarus, if you hover over the numbers in like the bottom right, oh, I might overlays up, hold on. Okay. There we go. Oh, it, it gives me a breakdown? Yes, it, it shows you. It gives you, me math? It shows what, what you the... like the, the roll and then the bonuses, so. Yeah. So um, the idea is that uh, that like basically the initiative so when we started a combat i would just sort it and so we would have a bunch of people though right the whole party and then however yeah. many enemies there are um uh, okay and uh okay. so this this guy would go first right yeah okay so we're this just decides the turn order mm -hmm. okay basically right. it is turn based so um okay. so you know how your your speed it says 30 right um, yeah. that means you have 30 feet of movement and the way that it works generally is that it's five foot squares mm -hmm. some people use different rules for diagonals in general I do not it's just like it's a uh, even though it makes no literal sense it's the same distance to go fifth like 20 forward as it is diagonal right okay just it's just to make it easier right yeah so you don't have to worry about the hypotenuse um so this guy, most characters, most humanoids have like a baseline of 30 feet of movement, including this guy. Mm -hmm. So he would like move up to you, right? Mm -hmm. And on his turn, <laughs> uh, and he would try to jab at you with his spear. Okay. So then I would roll. He, 20. Yeah, he hits a 20. Um, he rolls a 20. He, he Well, he rolled a 17. Uh, luckily, he didn't roll like a natural 20, right? Again, a natural 20 would be a, a critical hit mm -hmm. but it is not so you're um, six over your armor class yeah you get so yeah okay. so the the number that you measure it against is the armor class that i kind of referred to a little bit where 14 okay. yeah basically um yeah, and you're, you're easy to hit but you're you're a tanky yeah one. he's oh, i mean you're relatively easy to hit. you're still not too bad like um yeah to, to put it into perspective the uh like this guy 
has a plus three to his attack roll, right? And so um, you could imagine that your if it's a 20-sided die, he has a plus three, his average is going to be like 13, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's just he's pretty much just as likely to hit you as he is to miss you. Um, but yeah, so then uh, so that's the attack roll. It hits, so then I roll the damage. And so he would deal three damage to you, basically. Okay. And you would just subtract that from your stuff. And that's all he can do, really. He moved, and then he attacked. He doesn't want to move away, because then, it, again, it would give you that, like, attack of opportunity is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's just going to sit up in your face. And now it would be sit your turn. Sit up in your face. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so again, on your turn, the very, the very basics of it is that you have a, you have your movement of 30 feet. Yep. Um, which you can do like you can do it before the attack, you can do it after an attack or another action. You can do it like between other things, if that makes sense. Right? Mm-hmm. There's yeah, no you can, real. You can, you can move yeah. inter intermingled with it all. all yeah. The rest of your like game. eventually, like you'll have multiple attacks. Like if you knock this boy down, and... have another attack. You can move, then move further and. Yeah. If you had mm-hmm. more than one attack, you could like yeah, you could do one attack, move, do another attack, etc. Right. In um, general, mm-hmm. you got your movement yep. your action and your bonus action yeah so you action. have the movement and the action are the things that you basically always have and then there are some things that use what is called a bonus action basically it's normally not going to be um kind of as substantive as a as substantive as a action it's um, important for him though but yeah for you, for example, you start off with one very important thing that you can use your bonus action for, and that is your raging. Mm-hmm. So if you, uh, on the bottom right of your sheet, you see you have rage. So there's a counter for your rage, right? Yeah. But then also, a little uh, a little below that, a, a little below that, there is uh, the, the thing that just says rage class barbarian. Yes. If you click that, yeah, there you go. So you can see the first, uh, the second sentence says, "On your turn, whoop, you can enter rage as a bonus action." Mm-hmm. And it, this is just something that you would announce. You'd be like, "Hey, I'm raging." Yeah, I'm raging. Yeah, you only get. Right. Yeah, so like you, you generally you only get one bonus action to use per turn, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so in this case, this in your case, it's fine because that's all you have right now. A long term, you might have other things you want to do with your bonus action instead. Right? Big consideration mm-hmm. is, you probably wouldn't want to rage on one dude randomly because you might be fighting like five dudes later, and you already use one of your rages up on this guy. Yeah, and you start out with two of them. Yeah, you and day. and you basically you have you have a certain amount basically per day until mm-hmm. you sleep and take a long rest again. Um, this um this one minute is that like an in game minute? Oh yeah, so that... so uh, the way that it, the rounds work, each round represents six seconds of, of combat. Okay. So a minute is ten rounds. Most combats will not last more than like five. Yeah. <laughs> it really only comes up when there's like stuff going on that mixes like gets in the middle of combat like you chase somebody mm-hmm. down for like 30 seconds yeah so like uh mm-hmm. in most combats you are not gonna run out of rage um okay it's more likely you you might lose rage with uh like see in like the second to last paragraph if you you also your rage will end if you're knocked unconscious right mm-hmm. um or if you go like a whole round without attacking or someone or being attacked being does hit. rage stack can i do no. double rage no okay no it basically just uh it's a, yeah. a, a state that you're in or not mm-hmm. okay so uh so yeah so like if so now oh, that uh, it's your turn in this situation let's say that your character is going to rage so what you would do is you know first you would just mark off uh, that you're at one out of two rages because you're using one. <laughs> then you would uh, there's this little checkbox for global damage modifier. You can check that on. Basically, all that's saying is that uh, if you hit, it's below all the hammers and jabs. Yeah, and yeah, it's uh, yeah. So in the middle of your sheet with the attacks yeah, and the spell casting, very center of the sheet. Yeah, that's all your attacks. And, and there's like a rage them. damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, right yeah. there. I see. Yeah, yeah, you can check the the mark on the left yep. side of that. And the, right, the yeah. idea is basically um, 
now when you roll damage on a weapon attack, it'll just automatically add two because you're raging? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, then, whatever weapon you're using, you would just uh, decide. And uh, um, in combat, generally, I don't really worry too much about it. But, like, um, the idea is that beyond all your actions and stuff, you also, um, just for free, once a turn, can, like, pull something out. Like, you know, whip it out. No, I'm not. Uh, free act, free, free actions. Yeah, so so like basically as part of your attack that isn't locked. Yeah, as part of your attack, basically you just could pull out the war hammer. So if you didn't have it out already, and then swing with it. Nice. Okay, I think it rolled. It rolled it with advantage. Uh, did it do that by default? That's very strange. Hold on. Um, I'm gonna go so in your. I'm that, gonna mess with your that's sheet. That's not for rolled a with advantage. It's, that's just how default rolls are. Okay. It shows like it shows high and low by default. Yeah, I I messed with your sheet a little bit though, uh, Tartarus. Okay. What'd you do? At the very top, there's a few more options now. So you see where it says oh. advantage, normal. Yeah. Disadvantage. I do see that. Mm-hmm. And so like for now, so now that it's yeah, I forgot it does default to doing two rolls. So if you do a normal, hit uh hit the warhammer two handed again. Okay. Ah, okay. So. <laughs> that is rough as far as luck goes but uh <laughs> but yeah basically um so your character yeah you would have rolled a, a seven which again is a two plus a five um and so what i what i <laughs> trig is interrupting um what i will say is that um we don't have to get too much in this but uh the reason that it's a, a plus five to your attack roll right mm -hmm. is because you are proficient with your weapon your character is mm -hmm. proficient with this type of weapon and so we're not only adding your strength modifier of plus three, we're also then adding your proficiency of plus two, right? Um, which we kind of talked about yesterday. Like uh, that's the same reason, for instance, that your athletic skill is at plus five. Okay. Because you have the plus three from strength, and then you're proficient in it, which is what the check mark uh, indicates. Okay. Whereas, well, how does the yeah. rage enter into this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the that's rage a good. Does more damage. So it doesn't look good better. So then, if you uh, underneath that seven, which it didn't actually, it wouldn't have actually hit because this uh, a seven basically would hit nothing. Um, but <laughs> but let's assume it did, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Then if you click the the text underneath the seven that just says Warhammer, yeah, okay. that's actually a really good damage too. So basically. It rolls, uh, if you hover over the 12, mm -hmm. you can see that it rolled the d10, which is your baseline uh, die. Okay. And it adds the strength, right? Because it, you know, your strength is going to affect how hard you hit if you hit. Okay. Uh, and then it added the rage as well, separately as a 2. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yep. You, if you hit, you would have done 12 damage and probably one shot the boy, but yeah. you missed. Well, 14 damage, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, and that would have been a, a one shot on this guy. So, yeah, so like, um, yeah, so that does, um, and you can see how like at this point in time, your maximum damage normally is a, a 13, right? If you roll mm -hmm. the D10 of the 10 plus three. Um, so a two on top of 13, like that's a pretty big increase, you know, it's like 15% mm -hmm. more damage. Um, so and, to it, hmm? sorry. No, no like, you're to attack. Mm -hmm. To attack, I have to hit this, and then I have to hit that, and then it gives me my things. Yeah, well, so the uh, the attack roll is basically to see if you hit. Right? Oh, and then the damage mm -hmm. after that. Okay. Yeah, so basically, okay. if you if you call out, you're going to attack. You would roll a twelve, and I'd be like, oh no, that misses, and then okay. that would be your turn. Actually, yeah, you only bother. <laughs> but, okay, yeah, yeah. If you okay. hit something. Yep. Cool. But that's Makes the sense, idea. Is, uh, yeah, if you rolled, you would just call out the number, or I, I mean, I would see the number, and I would just tell you like that's gonna hit or that isn't gonna hit, and then yeah. uh, and then you would roll the damage and um, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, roll until you hit a natural twenty. You'll know because it'll be lit up in green. Oh, there we go. No, so that, so that's a non-natural twenty, like a. Why? Yeah. If yeah. You hover over the twenty. You didn't actually roll a 20 on the dice. It's 20 after uh, other modifiers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, roll until you get a... Oh, that was close. That's close. Yeah, looking for a green number. Oh, okay. So there's a red number. We'll get to that in a second. Let's just see how long <laughs> it... <laughs> oh, there, there you, you go. go. So yeah, there so you. the red basically means you rolled a natural one. The special thing about natural ones with attacks is that they will always miss, even if the number is high enough that it would have hit. 
Okay. In other words, like let's say that you had like a uh, long long term, you have a ridiculously high bonus to your attack, and you mm-hmm. roll a really high number. If it's a natural one, like you rolled a one on the die, it still misses no matter what. Yeah, because okay. it's a critical Makes failure. Sense. On the other hand, yeah. if you roll a natural twenty, um, which will light it up in green, that means that even if your attack would never hit the thing normally it will always hit it's guaranteed to hit Mm -hmm. not only that if you click the text specifically below that 25 it automatically rolls the uh the die again the way that crits work they don't double all of your damage but they do they double the amount of dice you roll okay any dice Mm -hmm. associated with a critical hit get rolled again yep but mm-hmm. stuff like your rage isn't doubled because that isn't from it's the wrong dice. roll yeah so like the yeah. the rage okay. is just plus two so it doesn't get changed same mm-hmm. with your your strength mod a plus three it's still only plus three but yeah but uh it rolls uh 2d10 instead of 1d10 so mm-hmm. in this case they both roll the same thing that's just coincidence oh. um <laughs> and just for for your sake this rule of like always missing and always hitting with attacks on natural 1 and natural 20 does not carry over to skill checks. There's no such thing mm. as crit failing or crit succeeding on a skill yeah. check. Yeah, the, the crits uh, yeah, the, the crits in this it's case just, just are, a combat um, sort of thing. Yeah. So, I know that's why is my mm-hmm. go ahead. Uh, why, why is my strength 3 and like why, why are these numbers here when I had the 16? And yeah, so, so that's just because of the the fact that back in the day the the stats were based off of uh the numbers you rolled so essentially the the the, the plus three um it, it kind of has to do with the fact that again like uh, like we were saying yesterday like 10 is like the baseline right which is why you see for your intelligence and wisdom uh your intelligence and wisdom are a zero you have no bonus or no malice because uh, that is perfectly average, right? And I don't know why they chose to do it the way they did, but basically for every two above 10, you get plus one to those rolls that are associated. Okay. That's why okay. your charisma right. bonus is plus one. And that's, yeah, and that's why if instead you're... Of, instead of even or plus two, you're yeah. in between two okay. different yeah. numbers. Yeah. So if you got, sense. if, you know, once you level up enough, if you were to put more points into charisma, and let's say you bumped it up to a 14, then... Yeah, in general, yeah. you want even numbers on your stats because that's when you get the full benefit. Yeah, so <laughs> if you bump, if you were to eventually bump up the charisma to 14, the modifier would go from plus 1 to plus 2. So, there are some things that get modified by the big number and not the modifier, but they're kind of rare. Stuff yes. like your, your, your flat strength score affects stuff like how much you can carry. Yeah, mm. but uh, in general, it's like... It's pretty much. And I think the strength is really like the only one. Your, uh, dexterity yeah. for dexterity tiebreaker is another. Oh, one. that's true. Yeah, but like in general, it's not like you're gonna need like the the thirteen for charisma. It's never really gonna the 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 only mechanical effect is that it determines that you have the plus one really. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does encourage you to eventually like put plus one there so you yeah. could be like better at intimidating people if you care about that but, but yeah like the 13 itself though it doesn't really have like a, a mechanical effect it, you know it, it could inspire you to to play your character a certain way because 13 is a significant a bit above the average of 10 right the average commoner on the streets is going to have like a 10 charisma right like the average mm-hmm. peasant um so your character is more charismatic than a than the average uh average they, joe they have a right? big personality yeah so, so even though ad is up to you even though it's only a plus one to rolls um oh god he know. found the icons <laughs> yeah mechanically they uh good. mechanically they're not like too much more charismatic uh to like some crazy level but you can still imagine them as being significantly more charismatic than the average i like person. the dude that barely mm-hmm. comprehends humanoid speech has the same charisma as well, my character. Well, I mean, charisma is not just like <laughs> charisma is not just yeah, like. like I said, it, it's there. It's like your per- force of personality. Force of personality, right? So your character Which is why can be intimidation is part of it. Yeah, your character can be very. Yeah, they are good at like intimidating. You can imagine that they just their expressions can give off a lot of like emotion without having to be good at speaking, right? So you know, charisma. He's just got. He's got yeah. no filter, so when he's pissed off, he just shows it instantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
But so, uh, so let's see. So this, um, let's play the this. Um, Canadian. He's really role playing. <laughs> yeah, let's play this combat out. So you had rolled what was it a seven or something? I think I missed, right? So yeah. Um, so that would have missed. So then, basically, mm -hmm. outside of raging, which was your bonus action, and then attacking your normal action, the only thing mm -hmm. you really had left would be your movement. And again, yeah. you could move away, yeah. but you risk taking an attack from him. Yeah. Moving yeah. would be more beneficial if there's other things going on. Right now, it's yeah. just you and a dude in an empty room. Yeah. So okay. for for that, you would just be. So it basically just be back to his turn. He would try to whack at you again. And so then, so when we're playing, lots of times I won't remember your armor class off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. Right. Right now, I remember it. But if I, lots of times, I would ask, "Does a 13 hit?" And then you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just we, we tell me. get into the habit of just when he'll roll open, we'll be like, hit, miss, yeah. move on. So then, okay. yeah, so in this case, your armor class is 14, that misses. Uh, which, by the way, it only has to match, it doesn't have to, to beat. Ah, all right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's how that's how mm -hmm. most things uh, work like that. So Greater if, than or equal. Mm -hmm, yeah, exactly. Right, so, okay. um, yep, but that is not the case, so now it would be back to your turn, right? So no. combats early on in the game are going to be pretty simple like this, basically. Okay. Yeah, fucking hand axe him. Shit. Okay. Yeah. So you pull uh, your character could like whip out a hand axe in the other hand. And, yeah. So uh, you'd be holding your hammer potentially in one hand and grab the axe in your, in your <laughs> hand and try and hit him with it. All right. Yeah. And you miss unfortunately. Um. Yep. Uh. So then it's his turn. He would. Uh, he also misses. <laughs> All, right. All right. But it's your turn. <laughs> Yo, the the fucking hand axe didn't do me well. I'm gonna war hammer him. Fuck. <laughs> so he yeah. drops the hand axe on the ground and beats on this guy with two handed <laughs> swing. With that. Yep, still misses. Let's see if I can hit you. Uh, nope, fuck. even worse. Uh, okay, back I, to I you. I love that this is how this <laughs> oh. is going of all things. Okay, yeah. That, so that... yeah, yeah. So that's uh that's right on the line. But this is dependent. Oh, um, <laughs> in this case, I've been playing this guy as if he just was holding the spear two handed. If he had a shield on, then it wouldn't have hit. But it does oh, hit okay. because he doesn't have a shield. Shields uh, baseline okay. just do plus yeah. two, but they obviously take up one hand. Um, yeah, one of the fiddly things about combat is kind of remembering what your character could do with their free hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like if um, you have a weapon and a shield on, you basically have no free hands unless you drop something. Yeah. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, so this guy has um, exactly 11 HP. So this is where a good, a good example of your rage, if you weren't raging... You wouldn't have killed him in one hit like you just did. Let's go. But since you did, you you matched his HP. He drops to zero. And, he and if is... he had hit you while you were raging, you yeah. would have taken half damage. That's true. Right yeah, yeah. So if mm. I hit you while you're raging, you uh, uh, on your rage, the list of things it gives you, it is the third yeah, you have one. Resistance, which is basically have having yeah. something and rounding it down. The third bullet point for your flashing. rage is that you essentially get resistance to normal damage, we'll say. Oh, he's he's charismatically strumming that drum. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um... Oh god, he's drinking the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so, so that's that's the idea of how combat works. Like, early on, it's not going to be too complex, right? It's, uh, for you especially, basically, your biggest decision is going to come down to, do I want to rage for this fight? That is disturbing, dude. Yeah. What's disturbing? Just part of you ceases to exist when you're drinking. Oh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> the green water bottle. Yeah. So um, yeah. So like yeah, again, early on, combat will be pretty simple. Eventually, you'll have a lot more things to think about, right? Like um. Yeah. 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 When there's like multiple allies and enemies, positioning can matter. And mm -hmm. Like if I was in the combat, for example, if I got behind this guy, you would have had a bonus to hit him. And I would add a bonus to him yep. since we're flanking him. Yeah, so they're, yeah. Which can encourage moving. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, or and by the way, with, with moving, by the way, if you wanted to, uh, if you want to, like, move around, like, let's say this guy is still alive, right? If you want to, like, circle around him in combat, that doesn't uh, provoke any attacks of opportunity. What it is only this boy modifying over here. Oh god! It only uh, the only time that they get that like free attack on you when you try to run is if you leave their range, their effective range. So yeah. Um, yeah, bed. Your bedroom. Dude. Your bedroom skill is good. Nice. 
Oh god, what the heck is that? Oh, shit, I didn't mean to click it. <laughs> oh god. I don't even know what oh, I'm looking god. at. Um, I don't have a name for it. How do I delete this? Here, let me look at uh, it. If you do the, the locking button, there should be an option to delete stuff, I believe. Yeah, so if you hit the oh, lock... Yes, okay. Yeah. There you go, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh... That's also how you reorder yeah. stuff if you ever want to like mess with your inventory or yeah. ordering mm -hmm. on your attacks. One thing I'll I'll point out, uh, it doesn't really matter in Roll Twenty because it does it for you. But like oh. if you ever play in person, it's like with your attack, um, you see, like you have the attack and then the damage roll, right? So like mm -hmm. the attack uh, thing on the column there shows like plus five or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And remember, this, so like that has your proficiency as part of it. Um, well, one thing to know is that, like, the, the damage, on the other hand, it only adds the strength, not the proficiency, right? Because basically how good you are, like, swinging the weapon around doesn't matter as much for determining the damage itself. That's Minus it. Drake. What the <laughs> heck? Oh, Drake. Um, but yeah, so that's just one thing, is, like, your proficiency is added to your attack roll, but not to your damage. Yeah, when in doubt, just say, just say what you want to do, and he'll tell you what to do to yeah. do it. Uh, Since there are also things that you might want to try in combat that aren't a button you can just push. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you can shove people, which yeah. has its own little bit of rules to it. Yep. Yeah, or you, you can grapple people, too. Actually, yeah, let's let's do that. So, normally, if you want to grapple people, that's something that your character might be uh, want, might want to do, because it is uh, your character is decent at it. A, I'm supposed to ask for a bag of holding? Yeah, you can ask for a bag okay. of holding, yeah. What is that? Um, you're it's, magical, it's a magical messenger bag where you can put a bunch of stuff in it and it doesn't weigh anything more than the yeah. bag. Since you asked, you're yeah. never getting one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, no, why since, is it not put in... Since he's asking, if Dreg's in the game, everyone but him gets it. Oh, there it is. I was like, where's my where's my guard sheet? But there it is. No, but anyways, though, so... um. Also, so, never have two bags of holding near each other. Yeah, yeah. So there is a... There is a um, a, a special thing in common with grappling essentially if you want to um in place of an attack you can choose to try and like grapple someone to hold them in place right okay yeah and uh and you might want to do that if someone looks like they're about to run and you want to give your teammates a chance to attack them right yeah Et cetera. or show off my sick jujitsu skills yeah. <laughs> yeah so the idea is that um to do this you would roll a athletics check to okay. basically signify you're trying to wrestle them. <laughs> All right. And so you just under, there you go. Yeah, under the skills, you just hit athletics. Simple as that. Um, and then basically I would roll. The person who's defending the grapple, like trying to escape or avoid the grapple, they can mm -hmm. they, they get the choice to do athletics, basically just out wrestling you. Um, or they can do like a dexterity roll, basically to dodge it, right? Mm -hmm. You have to do athletics. They can do either athletics or acrobatics. In this case, it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say I rolled, they would have failed, so you would have grappled them. Nice. And basically, when you're grappled, we kind of use slightly homebrew rules, which is that you can kind of drag the person around, but you're basically stuck in place with them. Okay. And um, beyond that, though, like when you're grappling them, you can still do like one-handed attacks against them. Yeah. The thing is, you have to do one-handed because one of your yeah. hands is stuck holding but yeah. the boy. But basically, even though you're now that, grappling you can grab him, two people at once, or yeah. more if you have more arms. Yeah. So like, basically though, this guy, uh, like, let's say you were grappled with him, you could still attack him uh, once it comes to your, your next turn, right? Because that takes a, mm -hmm. a an attack essentially. But on your next turn, you could attack him while you're grappled. It would just be normal. Of course, he could also attack you back. Right, so, mm -hmm. but that's basically it. Like, that's pretty much the extent of what you really need to know for combat. So, yep. Other than that, I guess he has to decide what two, two stats to put, or why well, yeah, he has to decide whether he's human yeah. or very human. Mm -hmm. And the trait. Um, yeah. yeah, like if you're or the feature human, or whatever. You, yeah, if you're yeah. normal human, you just put add one to all of your stats. Yeah, yeah. If you want to be variant, you pick two and then figure out a. A thing yeah yep um yeah so yeah uh you could look at that definitely grappler the... is actually one of the feats if you want to grapple better yeah, yeah. um 
There is, uh, let's see. In fact, I think it's the, I think it's the SR, SDR feat. <laughs> By the way, there is, like, ranged weapons do have limited ranges. So it, it hit the, uh, hit the javelin button. Because it should mm -hmm. show when you click javelin to make an attack with the javelin. Um... <laughs> Is that you were doing that? Oh, there you That's go. That's javelin going. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so you see how it says thirty slash one twenty. Um, right under the. Yep. Yeah. So the basically anything within thirty feet from you. So if you use like the ruler thing, you can see like this guy is right within thirty feet. Anything within thirty th thirty feet of you is. Uh, is like normal attack roll, normal range, right? However, you can throw further than that, up to a maximum of 120. Okay. So if this guy was way over here in the bottom left, further away, yeah, and when you measure, yeah, so he's 55 feet away, mm -hmm. um, you could still throw an attack at him. However, since he's outside of the optimal range, you would roll with mm -hmm. disadvantage. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And so at the top of your screen, there's that button to toggle disadvantage. And then, uh, yeah. So if you, yeah, if you hit the button for, yeah, up here at the top, you see where I'm, uh, sure. yeah. So if you basically toggle disadvantage and then do the javelin attack, now it'll basically be showing, it'll, it'll do it automatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. So remember that like um. Uh. Basically. Uh. Yeah. Basically. Um. So yeah. Remember, advantage is you take the higher two rolls. Disadvantage is you take the lower. Right. So, uh. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yep. So then. Uh, basically, yeah. You would have disadvantage on that guy. You would have rolled a seven, which would have missed. Um, but a nine would have two, to be fair. <laughs> but, how, how do we erase things on the board? I can do I've made a mistake. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, that's, uh, you know, that's basically it. Like, um... Yeah, now it's just months worth of what do I do to do this until you know most of it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's, uh... Like you pretty much now have everything you need um, to uh, to play the game. So mm -hmm. yo, mm -hmm. yeah, there are a lot of like extra rules that are good to know. Like for example, instead of attacking or moving further using oh, yeah. your action in combat, you can do something called dodging, which makes yeah. people have disadvantage to hit you. Yep. So mm -hmm. there's like a more route. defensive option. But you're trading off not being able to do anything with your action because you took your action to try yep. and dodge. Oh, <laughs> and there's all there's also other stuff like you can prepare actions. Basically, like yeah. you can say like maybe you're not within range of an enemy, but it looks like they're gonna charge at you. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're out of movement. You could say, oh, I'm gonna ready my attack so that if they come within range, I hit cool. them. Right. One of the kind of mm -hmm. cheesy like things that. you can do is uh, if you're like on the other end of a field from somebody with a bow you will run towards them a little ways and hit the dirt and go prone because yeah. ranged attacks have trouble hitting a prone character. Yeah. Okay. Basically, so yeah. So then you go prone, <laughs> you stand up, which costs some movement to stand up, but it makes it so that they have a lot harder time of hitting you as yeah. you're trying yeah. to get up to them. Yeah. Essentially, they, yeah, they have disadvantage on their attacks if you're prone because yeah. they're hitting a smaller target, right? So Opposite's true if you're in melee range, though. Like, if you go, if you hit the ground next to somebody with, like, a axe, they just start wailing on you with advantage. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it can lead to some dangerous stuff if you have, like, an enemy that can knock you down and then their teammates, their other enemies, will just start beating on you while you're on the ground. It can be pretty nasty. That's what mm -hmm. happened to Drake's character <laughs> in our uh, in our game. Except he was literally unconscious when I think the guy bashed his skull in. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the uh, yeah, no, the uh, yeah, Drake's character did fucking die. The <laughs> I I think the the attack that that killed him wasn't in a critical hit too. I think he crit 
Which is why we kind of said that he literally well, splattered Well, if you hit an unconscious brains. creature with melee, it's always... Well, it's a crit, but it was also like a natural 20. So it was like... Yeah. It was like a he earned the crit, not only you know, so uh, <laughs> so splattering half of his head across the concrete. Yeah, yeah, we basically, uh, yeah, we said that his he was splattered. Or, or <laughs> actually, where where did that come? I guess it was like the docks. Yeah, I think it yeah. might have been like concrete or well, like stone or something, cobblestone. <laughs> I don't remember if it was what it was made of, but yeah. Has anyone done? I mean, I know the answer is yes. Yeah. But has anyone played chess, but with like D and D rules on a board? <laughs> uh, like we just make—I mean, we can just make a chessboard on here and then have all our yeah, yeah. And like you have to roll for each <laughs> attack that you do. Oh god! But you have to follow the pieces move. Yeah, except every, then they're different. Every different piece on a chessboard has a full stat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a backstory. Okay, but yeah, so. So one yeah, thing, uh, chess. No, no, no. I need to be emotionally invested in the king's death. One thing I need to do is I have to figure out how I'm gonna find tokens for you guys. I don't. I mean, I'm streaming this. I don't really want to just like steal people's art <laughs> to use. Um, but I also can't really commission all of the shit. <laughs> uh, how, so, how much would it cost to commission a bunch of like token sized? It wouldn't even yeah. have to be like. It would be basically busts if you're going on a It would budget. cost more than I'm willing to spend. <laughs> Let's just put that. Um, be like five to ten bucks per. It's probably. Thing. I think it's more than that. It would like to All do right, really? a decent art. It would be poetry like, stud uh, sub goal bucks or something. Yeah, there we I'll go. Get everyone commissioned art. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Now my my uh, my friend um, Ori, who I play D and D with on Saturdays, she does art, and she does she has very high quality art, and like has literally had stuff be published oh, by God. wizards of the coast so like her was getting incepted <laughs> she she has really good like a very high quality stuff i think for like a like a portrait she she charges like a hundred bucks but it's like it's professional shit though you know i, I can <laughs> run ads on your street <laughs> wait no i don't approve that's funny that's actually really I'm not funny. Gonna do it. you can you can you're restreaming my stream and then you can just run ads that's funny <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyways, though, so yeah, that's... I'm getting, I'm getting um, tunnel vision. Yeah, so so that's good, though. So, like, with Tartarus here, uh, having your character done, like, all... Pretty much all I have left to do is I have to talk to Drag and... Um, is Drake back in again? <laughs> he is tentatively in. Uh, I will also let you guys know, I'm not going to spoil what it is but so uh, I, I actually meant to say this to everyone but the um so uh <laughs> so so you guys know so like we're doing this campaign which is one of three options right and yep. um everyone had this so there's only three options and i asked for everyone to give the two that they would prefer to play everyone had the reason we're doing this one is because everyone had this as one of their two choices except for drag but this <laughs> but this but this was the most preferred campaign overall so it's still the most fair right it was my first pick so yeah it was several people's first pick and then whoever didn't had it as the second pick but um except drag so because of that uh because of the fact that drag didn't necessarily care for this one i'm gonna spoil i'm not gonna spoil what it is but I did give him a special offer to sweeten the deal that no one else has, which is it is wow. it is the definition of unfair. But also, it's uh, you know, it's it's mostly just to to make it so to to basically uh, reward Drake for not seeing what he wanted to see, which was boobies. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not anything that's gonna unbalance it. It's rather. I gave him an opportunity to, at some point, uh, yeah, no. It's not like I'm just going to give him something uh, more powerful or something like that. No. He may or may not uh, have, mm, I don't want to spoil it. He, he, he might just get access to something that is, uh, it's the same power levels as the rest of you guys, but it's a little more kind of lore specific, we'll just say. 
So don't worry, it's not like I'm gonna, yeah. It's it's not like he's gonna start uh, at a higher level or something. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, lots of times I'll I'll try to do something like that. Like if a character really wants to do something but it doesn't work, I'll try to give them someone to make up for it. Like uh, I tried so so Matt, since Matt always plays paladins, I I was talking with Matt and I was like I think you should branch out, right? And mm-hmm. he and it seems like he is actually going to do that. But I was for a while I was like I was like Matt, if you do something besides a paladin, I'll give you like some special boon. <laughs> I was like I'll give you some special uh, like role play thing if you're uh, if you do something else. But he didn't take the bait. Don't don't say boon. I'm getting flashbacks to Alderland. Mm, what do you mean? That's why we were so overpowered. We had multiple boons. Yo, you the, get, yo, the, I just guy. want, I just want to say that this camp, our other campaign on Fridays, I didn't even mean to give you the boon of a shield guardian. You just took it. You just took it. Like, wait, is a shield guardian also on the boon list? No, but like, it is a, it is a boon in a literal sense. That it's like a thing that has like uh, overpowered the party. Don't you know this by now? Do not put something in front of the players. Yeah. Unless you're willing for them to take it somehow. <laughs> yeah. I Remember mean, that's the basilisk skags from the first campaign. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, like uh, you know, the the combat in the last session, which led to Drag's character's death, uh, that combat was a result of you guys. Uh, um, taking or keeping the shield guardian, right? So it's so like you know, as as maybe maybe it was a little um, now a little ridiculous that that guy showed up so quickly. But at the same time, you knew he was going to show up at some point. You, you yeah, weren't just you know going to. I want an actual boon. I want a dude in a red beret. Yeah. Um, that is true though. If Nidus had had the shield guardian amulet, he wouldn't have died. That's true. But yeah, no, that like that was a perfect example of where you guys did something. You took uh, this powerful thing, which has benefited you a lot, but it also made you an enemy in that guy. Um, what's his face, Alfonso? Dude, and uh, we you did so suffer easily consequences. Just dumped that night off the side of the ship and been done with it. <laughs> you could have. Yeah, well, that's well, that's we the were thing. What we to do is avoid problems with a king of a foreign country. But... Yeah. Yeah, you know. it's it's one of those things where you you might have been better off if you did the the less morally just uh, justified thing earlier, but instead you guys were like we'll be good, except then we're gonna, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it is interesting, but yeah, no, definitely that's one of those things where like, you know, you guys weren't gonna be able to get out of that situation without no that guy need. tracking you down. Anyways, um, yeah. I think that is where we'll uh, we'll wrap up this little brainstorming session, though. Sounds good. I, I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like yep. I said, it, it, it is a lot to take in, but, like, once you have it all in your head, then it's basically, like, that's it. There's not really much else um, that changes the game too much. It's just, Honestly, um, you're adding... a brand new player yeah. is great because you, tr- you think of stuff that people that have played, like, years of it don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. because you don't know that whether you can or can't buy the rules. Yeah, to do something. yeah, that's it, and that's something uh, Kraylox that I was telling him yesterday is like when you're, especially when you're outside of combat, but even in combat, just in general, like you don't need to put things in mechanical terms. You can just tell me what would your character do or try to do, and then I'll tell you if it needs a roll or if it just works. You know, like uh, yeah. the mechanic side of thing, I can handle pretty much. Your job is to just think about what your character would do to react to stuff. You know? One of the things so, I right. do is I always do, like, custom equipment on my characters because I always grab stuff like ball bearings and lanterns yeah. and stuff because you could just do some really weird stuff with the right equipment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a... Uh, yeah, and, uh, like, magical items have... have there's a whole, a whole wide world of magical equipment. That, One of my uh, favorite things, yeah. there's a spell called Catapult, where you can, like, <laughs> launch an item that weighs between one and five pounds at an enemy and do damage to them. Just, like, bludgeon okay. them with something, like a rock. <laughs> but instead of using a rock, I like to throw up, like, a 
vial of acid in the air and launch that <laughs> at their face. Yeah, you can launch acid at enemies with magic. Acid, or you know, maybe a bag of ball bearings so it explodes and <laughs> makes the ground hazardous under them, or you know, fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. There is a uh, a sack of flour. There was in in our in our Friday game at the start of the campaign. They were in like a dungeon early on, the very first uh, dungeon they were in, and they there was like a, a chase sequence. Where the group essentially had to run away from enemies pursuing them through a dungeon. Mm -hmm. And they, <laughs> on like one flight of stairs, they like, okay, they, I think, so Kragox's character threw a bunch of like caltrops or uh, whatever, or maybe it was ball bearings. I don't remember. It was basically they just threw a bunch of shit on the ground that was going to trip up the enemies. Then they cast the spell darkness and basically made it so that anyone running through the staircase 